from home three times a work. Yeah. You know, for some organizations, you're even working like online through right, a, a remote right. working. Yeah. So um, there's so much to there's so much to learn. Grab your notes. Get ready. Um, let's not waste time here. Let's welcome yeah. for the opening remark, Larry Basanta. Please put your hands together. It's a good time for me to beg and say, please clap, if you don't mind. <laughs> I, was, I was trying to use, uh, to use that to feel comfortable. I, I think the right place to start is to say welcome. Um, I'm very expectant that at some point we're going to fill um, major parts of the room. We have some pretty encouraging numbers from a registration perspective, so I expect that the room will be fuller at some point. Um, like Lara and Sami said, it's a knowledge session, and we're confident that you will pick a thing or two. I will give some bit of background. I have five, 10 minutes to welcome you. Um, so I'm typically at events, speaking myself, and um, this event, unlike the many that I attend that I have to speak, here, I'm, I'm here not just because I'm privileged to be part of the team who put this together. I'm here because, very much like you, I want to move my own careers forward. I'm privileged, very honored to have some of our speakers on seat. Um, when they came in, I was introducing them to themselves, and it's such a thrill that of the speakers, exciting cast of speakers that we have, the three of them have either worked with me before. No, that's wrong. I have either worked with them before or I'm currently working with them right now. Um, so you're going to do me the honors as we recognize them in person. I know it's not even my job. It's Sammy's and Lara's job, but please. Um, I want to recognize very specially the lady first. Um, Eliana recruited me, I think, four or five years ago, and um, it was from a single core. I'm not sure I made her life easy in any way, but it was brilliant working with her. We worked quite personally on some level, and um, it was such an honor not just to work for her, because you know, saying at HR, they recruit us. It was an honor to work for her, but more importantly, it's an honor to sit down and listen to you teachers. Uh, please join me as we recognize Elena in the room. Yeah, thank you for coming, and thank you for coming on time. You know, um, I, I can't imagine that it was easy. Uh, I also want to recognize very specially Emmanuel. Uh, Emmanuel, incidentally, I work now at InterSwitch. Many of you know InterSwitch is such an interesting bell moth of a place. And um, I'm now privileged to work more closely with Emmanuel. And it's also interesting to listen to you teach us. Um, I want to say thank you for honoring us and thank you for coming on time also. Please help me recognize Emmanuel. Uh, Emmanuel, thanks. Um, I want to thank and recognize also very specially, uh, people call him Timmy outside, but I know him as Tokbe. Tokbe was not just my HR, he was and remains my mentor. He's one of those guys, I actually did a recommendation on his LinkedIn because what distinguishes him from many is that he's able to see your potentials. He saw mine. I was in business and he said that you could be in marketing. And I'm, a, I'm one of those few guys who, from being in business, talk by Ed haunted me as the head of marketing and communications in my company when I'd not done marketing for many years. Um, thank you so much for your leadership, your friendship, and it's such a thrill and honor to have you. Please help me recognize talk by Endorum. <laughs> now, as excellent as their profile is, it wouldn't make a world of difference if you yourselves weren't here in the room and those online. So if you don't mind, let's take a moment and just recognize and appreciate and welcome each one of you. For yourselves, please. <clears throat> yeah. So a short statement about what we do. This is Daystar Career Development. We don't do programs because we are church. We are not church. I mean, we're in the church, but we are not church, right? So this is not a service. And we're not at this program because we have to have a program. No, no, no. We're here because um, there was a day we had a meeting and we're convinced that this is our own ministry. Just as 
evangelists and apostles goes, go out to win souls. This is how we win souls. This is how we change lives. We change lives not just with the word of God and passages from the scriptures. We change lives through PowerPoint presentations. We change lives through question and answer sessions. And so while we're praying yesterday, and yes, we prayed and we fasted. While we're praying, part of what we prayed for was for lives to be changed was for careers to be rescued, was for souls to be transformed. I hope you are here with such expectations that you are not here to just listen to the fancy words or meet people. Yes, you have to network. Yes, you have to hear the fancy words. But we're very expectant that you are here with expectations. Our hope is that such expectations will be met and that at some point you will share your testimonies with us. So thank you. Sit back, relax, listen, and I hope you will be changed. Thank you very much. Sami Lara. Thank you very much. The next person I will be inviting up has no idea who I am, but I learned of him when I attended the CIPM session. And I really usually would not attend the CIPM session. And um, I just said, oh, let me attend. Let me learn. I'm sure there'll be a thing or two to learn from this, com um, this program. And the depth at which he was sharing was so impactful and so insightful. So don't underestimate anything you're going to learn today and get ready to action on it. So the next person I'll be inviting will be our keynote speaker. And um, before he comes to the podium, there'll be a voiceover to talk about his bio. We'll be speaking to us on how to leverage technology in the workplace. We'll just wait a while for IT. Are we ready or should I go on? All right. Okay, so I'll read from I'll read the bio from here. Uh Timi Toko Logoye is the chief operating officer at AutoCheck Africa, a pan-African auto check and mobility financing company. He previously held executive and HR leadership positions across multiple segments in Nigeria and beyond, including Cars 45. I know a lot of us have sold or bought cars through Cars 45. Genesis Group, System Specs, um, IGI PLC, Global Trust Bank, Global Com, City Express, and First Bank PLC. He currently sits on the board of One Profit and two nonprofit organizations. Timmy Tokpa is a certified life coach and senior professional in human resources, who previously served as a council member of the CIPM Nigeria, where he currently serves as a faculty member and member of the Strategic Planning and Implementation Committee, SPIC. He also prepares students for, institu for, for, for the institute's professional exams is a fellow, is a fellow, is a mentor, as well as a professional member of Society of Human Resource Management in the US. All right, he's, respectable, he's a respectable builder and leader of talent who is focused on innovation, process improvements, and strategic growth. I can go on and on and on. Please, welcome with me, Timmy Tokwe Ologwe, our first keynote speaker.
Wow, thank you, thank you, thank you for, for the introductions. Um, Basanda, thank you also for your warm welcome. Uh, good to be in here this morning, and it's a privilege to actually be speaking to us uh, today. I'm not just here to speak, I'm also here to learn. You know, I was telling one of my colleagues about three days ago that every opportunity I have to learn, I try to do so. And I was telling him that it would be a shame if people are also not learning, if you people are also not learning from me. You know, the worst place you can ever be is a place where you cannot really learn and unlearn. And so, after I get out of the way uh, with the keynote uh, this morning, I'm going to sit down and then begin to take notes profusely with the expectation that I can also take something away from air that will actually help me improve uh, my business, my organization. So I'm not just the CEO at AutoCheck, I'm also the co-founder at AutoCheck. So if you've worked for people for some time, you also want to uh, get into certain things to help move society forward. So we are trying to solve uh, transportation. So we are trying to solve transportation poverty problem across the African uh, continent. Uh, as of today, we are present in nine countries, in about uh, 16 cities, and uh, we are expecting to be able to double that, maybe before the end of the year. So can I have my slide up, please? Is it? Okay, it's on now. So I've been asked to talk around how to leverage technology in the workplace. So and I will start with some stories, and then I will get into the meat of the matter. Now, um, I think I put there that technology is the best way for you to actually give yourself and your business a common advantage. Uh, it's really good to be manual. It's really good to do all the sweat and the hard work. But if you actually want to have a quantum leap, not just in your personal life, but in your career or in an organization where you lead or happen to be managing at least a team of two, then one way or the other, you will really need technology. And I'm trying to paint a story around the slide that technology eats, is eating up the world. Um, let me go closely. I, I don't know if we're able to see it properly. Now, the, as of 2022, uh, last month, these are the top publicly traded uh, companies by, by market capitalization. And if you look at it, every five, five years from 2015, most of the companies that you can see in that place, I'm not sure I'm able to see. I know that the first one there is ExxonMobil, right? Uh, the next there, I think, is uh, General Electric. We have Shell. Most of them are oil and gas companies. I think the last on the right, as of 2015, is Citigroup. A majority of them are either oil and gas services or financial services or banking. So five years down to 2011, you still have ExxonMobil as the biggest, right? And then followed by Apple that had found its way there. But apart from Apple, as of 2011, Every other one was either oil and gas, Shell, General Electric, and I think uh, one bank from China joined. I think uh, there was Petro China joining that group, and then there is the Industrial and Commercial Bank of China joining that group in 2011. But fast forward down to 
2016, you can see that everything is orange, right? So all the top five as of 2016 are tech businesses. So you will see the Apple, you will see Alphabet. Alphabet is the parent company of uh, Google, right? So you will see Microsoft, you will see uh, Facebook, and so on and so forth. And now down to 2022, you can see them. Uh, Apple, Alphabet, Microsoft, uh, Facebook, uh, Tesla. And Tesla, that is even the smallest of the tech giants as of 2022, is bigger than the most capitalized business as of 2011, which is ExxonMobil. As at the time that I was in school, the dream of every young person is to work in ExxonMobil, Chevron, Shell. How many still have that dream today? To work in oil and gas. But as you will see from what I've just shown you, there has been a paradigm shift. So if technology is eating up the world, and I can go on and on, I've only showed you five, the next five is still technology. You won't still find oil and gas, you won't find financial services, you won't find insurance, or any other industry, not even General Electric anymore. The next five to this five are still in the tech space. So that means something is important about technology as an enabler of careers, of work, of organizations. And so when we are talking about digitization today, I want you to debug your mind around the use of just smartphones or use of just uh, Microsoft Excel is about using technology to enable either work, enable your career, or to solve problems. It can be automation and so on and so forth. So I will start by telling this story, and then we quickly look at different areas of work where I think you need to begin to think of how you can use technology to give yourself an uncommon advantage. This phone that you will see first there, I don't know how many of us are familiar with it. Yeah, Nokia 3310. I bought it when it came. I remember I was uh, in between trying to leave City Express Bank Globalcom was about to start, so I'm one of the pioneer staff of Globalcom those days. I bought the first share that people sat in Globalcom at Sakatinobu. That time we had just five seats, and if you don't sit on time, you will come, you will stand for most of the day because we don't even have enough seats to, to take everyone. So we call it uh, Ojabokufo. Uh, for those who don't understand your bad at ease, if you go to a two-story building and you throw down a Nokia 3310, the battery will scatter, just come down, pack it together, you are moving on again. In the worst of places, I remember those times we would switch on our BTS and microwave in distant cities. It is only those who have Nokia 3310 that will be able to pick little signal and you will still be able to answer the call. So Nokia 310 was really the in thing. It was, it was the big deal that time. I remember my first SIM, I bought it at 3,000 Naira. <laughs> you remember? I don't know whether some of us still remember. And then fast forward, Nokia 310 just disappeared like that. I remember the CEO of Nokia saying about two years ago that we just we lost out. Not because of anything bad that we have done, but we were just swallowed up by the competition. So sometimes, you may not even be doing it wrong, but because you are not innovating and changing fast enough, you are taken out. So the race to digital is intense, and it's only those who will get on it that will actually be on the top, and the top is only meant for just one person. Every other person is swallowed. So fast forward, in 2014, I was in the U.S., and I wanted to buy Blackberry Cove. I think that was the one that came into Nigeria and was raining then. I was in Houston. And I was going from one store to the other. 
I want to buy blackberry curve. And they will look at me like this. Which planet is this guy from? Right. I didn't know that an end is coming to the enterprise story of blackberry. So the way blackberry was designed, it was designed naturally for the enterprise and not for the retail. And then from 2011 going forward, there was a shift from, to, from enterprise to retail mass market. Just speak a little take rates, but get the masses on it. And that is how organizations are growing their valuation. And so Blackberry also died. And then the evolution of the smartphone. I'm very sure that everyone in this room this morning is either having Android or iPhone. Two of us. That's the generation that we are now. But I also think that that will not last for too long. And so that's why we need to be digitally literate to ensure that irrespective of what happens, you will never experience what you will call career obsolescence as a result of going out of fashion and understanding of what is actually needed to compete effectively and globally in the modern age. And I learned a lot from my little baby of the house, uh, the last of the family. Uh, I'm trusting that I, I already hung my boots. She's uh, 11 now. But one thing, if she wants me to buy pizza or anything for her from work, even though she has a phone to type to me on WhatsApp, she will always use the voice note on WhatsApp. Oh, daddy, can you please branch at Domino's? and get me pizza this evening on your way from work, she knew that if you had sent it as a text, I may say, I didn't see it, or I was too busy, I didn't connect. But she knew that once I can hear a voice, something inside me will respond to pizza. And it's worked all the time. So learning from her, I know that in the next 10 years, most of the phones that we have today that ask A, B, C, D, column L, K, J, typing text, we no longer exist. And the kids that will be born in 2030 will ask, Daddy, how were you able to type on this A, B, C, D, SMS on this small phone and have exchange on WhatsApp? It doesn't make sense. Most communications will be voice enabled because the world will be too fast to be typing. Because as you are saying it, it's being typed. There are machine learning algorithms converting speech to text immediately. So it will be a pure waste of time at that time. So at that time, it will be like using analog mentality to work in a digital world. So let me, let me go to another story. Anyone familiar with this disket? I finished universities in the mid-late 90s, and while waiting for my youth service, I went to a computer school to learn computer science. That time, we used to contribute money. I remember when I was in my year one in the university, we contributed money to somebody who went to a cyber cafe to help us open our Yahoo email. It was the big deal. We contributed money. And he said, you know, I have to go on transport. I have to pay for internet at the cyber cafe. And when he came with the email address, wow, we were on top of the world. It was the best thing to us. So when I finished university, I wanted to be on the, uh, at the cutting edge. So I quickly went to a computer school to learn uh, vBasic, Microsoft Word, Corel, uh, Adobe, PageMaker, and so on and so forth. And this is what we used to save uh, information that time when we type. And the biggest memory, I remember that time, I bought it. It was 144 MB. 140, it was the biggest of all diskettes, 144 MB. If MTN sends you 144 MB now, you just look at what will this one do for data, right? So as, as that increases, you know, people needed to store more data. That time, you have to buy a packet of it. It's always in 12-12, right, inside that carton. And then we moved to CD-ROM. CD-ROM was upgraded from 144, and then we have 700 MB. Wow! 
was awesome. You can save so many things. So I have write only, read only. How many of you can remember what I'm talking about? And then people began to yearn for video. But video consumes too much space. And then we moved on to DVD. Wow. Wow. Those of us that were working in bank when I was doing my youth service were the big boys that have DVD. You know, as a copper, you set it, gadget, can wood, everything with DVD player and TV. Say, go and look at this room. Ah, he's not a copper like us. You know, he's a banker. You know? And gradually we moved from there to flash drive. And then people can boast to say, I have one terabyte. I can store one TV on my flash drive. This one is from the US, special made from China. But today, it is the world of cloud storage, right? P Cloud, iCloud, Mega, anything, Dropbox, Box, and so many tools, right? You know, uh, yesterday, my uh, middle girl is leaving school this morning. And so she's coming back, and her laptop uh, memory size had been, is full. You know, these uh, modern Dell laptops that don't have too much memory. They use external memory and all this stuff. So the mom called the guy to say, oh, come and help me upgrade. She's coming back from school today. And the guy was calling a ridiculous price for one size. And I just told my wife that, come. But the phone that you want to dash out, the phone fell earlier in the week and smashed. And they said, okay, to change the screen, it's 120000 Said to change the screen. Instead, I will buy another phone and give it out. Said, please, let me remove the memory there and put inside this laptop. So currently, the laptop that I use does not even have a space for USB, right? So if I need to get a USB from my uh, MacBook, I'll have to get a connector to do that. Because they assume that it's too cheap to save things on Google Drive and all this stuff than looking for USB and hard disk drives all about. So if the world has moved from disket to cloud storage, what is the state of your career today? I see so many young people still send CVs to me, especially the young people from Iluoki. You know where they call Iluoki? Oyo, Undo, Bini. I hope I'm not yabbing. <laughs> they will even go and scan the thing on image, the CV on image, so that I can say, I said, no, just send me a soft one that I can share with people through WhatsApp. They are not able to. They are not digitally wired or enabled. So you cannot afford to be living in the old age in the modern times that we live. You need to understand what works because that is the first leg forward that gives you an advantage. I'm sure you are also familiar with this. I'll move pretty fast now. This thing that you first saw there, I know that very many of us may not know it. We call it turntable recorder those days. It has a needle on top of it to play music. And the best time I enjoy this thing at home is always on Sunday morning. Wow. I'll be washing the car, getting ready for church at 10 a.m. And my dad will be blasting a lot of Christian music from this turntable. Like, uh, how many of us know Niya Dedokun? You understand? King Sonia Day, Ebenezer will be Everywhere we'd be blasting with Kenwood speakers and engine. It was the in thing. If your dad doesn't have it, you're not in town. You've not arrived. And gradually, we moved to cassette player. When I was on campus, what was raining is what we call one rechargeable lamp. It is wine. It used to be wine in color. You can remember now. Ah, it took you there. Yeah. Down the memory lane. So we have, I remember those days. We play Bishop David Oyedepo. You increase it. Wow. 
There are some places you want to hear over and over again. So when you are pressing, they will rewind. And it's not doing for, or you want to fast forward. You remove it, put your big Bible, and roll it. Yeah, this brother, she, he understood. Yeah, that was, that was that generation. And gradually we moved to this other player where you can put MP3, right? MP3 player, I remember they start those days. Uh, I'm having some nausea now. I think it was in 20, 2014. I was speaking at uh, the business forum at 70, that time we, we are, is it 71 or 91 now? Uh, I forgot. <laughs> I remember when we finished and they gave me the whatever. It was case at those days. In plastic, it's just that this time was advanced. We're using transparent casing for our case at Classy. But there was, there was a year we just started MP3 and the things changed. And the interesting thing about our church is that the evolution goes on. And I think that's what Basanta was talking about. And today, everything is there. You have the boom play, you have Spotify, you have uh, Diesel, and so on. Like I said, I learned from the baby of the house. You know, my, my baby of the house has Alexa in her room. And I hear her sometimes. She'll just say, Alexa, play me Ariana Gandhi. One day I said, what is Ariana Gandhi? She said, she's a musician. I said, okay. Now, in my own generation, if I needed to listen to a music, wow, I'm in trouble now. Wow, okay. I'll move fast. At the end of the day, the communication is what is most important. I hope you are following me. You are enjoying my story. Okay, good. Now, in my own generation, if I want to listen to any track of Ariana Gandhi, I will have to buy the entire CD by force, EP. And it will be album, right, from 1 to 15. And I will go and play the one I want. But for her generation, she wants that particular music on demand instant. She will mention the title of the album. And in nanoseconds, Alexa begins to play it for her in her room. That is the world that we live now. And e e employers also expect instant solutions and answers from you. Because a job is a solution to a company's problem through a desk. If you are not able to solve that problem fast, get out of the way. And that's why we have massive open online courses today, mocks. Before you need to go to the university to learn and all this stuff, most knowledge today are moving away from codification to personalization. So, if I'm setting up an alumni network in my organization for those who had left, I'm setting it up not just for the network between the alumni, but for the benefit of those who remain in the organization. So, instead of somebody going to the organizational library to say, oh, how do I get the report of 2011 committee that worked on this project? You can easily go to the alumni network and search for the chairman of the committee who now lives in Canada. And then you shout on Slack, Trello, instant. I, hello, sir. I'm the current chairman for this team in this organization in 2022. I learned that you were the chairman in 2011. Our CEO talked about one thing you did at that time. Can you explain how you, you get that information on the spot? If you were to go into a book that they documented at the end of the project in the library, you may spend three days, three sessions. And looking for it but you're able to get instant information and so as an employee you must understand how to use technology to give yourself that advantage in the workplace again the job is all about solving the problem that needs to be solved you remember this in the school too I, for, for those who were stubborn like me on campus even though I was already born again on campus I was still guilty of hiding books you will take it from accounting department and go and put it in medicine and surgery. No accounting student will go to medicine. We are giving librarians a big. Because you want to have instant access to that book anytime you show up in the library. And because some of those books are always limited in, in supply. You, you, you notice, the textbook that your prof normally uses is always limited in supply in the library. 
And so we go and hide it and keep it in another de department. But in the modern world today, you don't really need to do that. You just need to get on iRead, iBook, Amazon uh, Docs, and so on and so forth. And you're able to read books on demand. That's the world we live. Remember the days of taxi. Some people, some yellow cabs and some taxi drivers at the airport said, no, uh, which one is this boat to buy? They will, they will die off. But today, they've taken businesses away from them, right? There was a time I, I worked from Port Harcourt as executive general manager for Genesis, and I used to facilitate a course at LBS at 11 in the morning. I will land at the local airport, first flight, 8 to 9 a.m., and then I will have to want to pick. That was one day my driver was at the corner to just turn in. It was taking forever. So in a haste, I tried talking to one of the cab guys. How much? And he said, 9,000. Ah, to go to, El why 9,000? He said, before I can step out at all, I have to pay 3,000 to the association. And they, they are on the queue. In seconds, I just picked Duba. And maybe I just spent maybe 2003 and all the stuff like that. You see how their business is disrupted, right? So don't stay on the taxi while your contemporaries are getting on board Uber. That's the, that's the crux of this conversation. So I don't know, is it possible for us to play this video now? Is there a volume? Okay. I really hope you can see it. Good morning, Jill. That's Good a worker. Morning, Amy. Where would you like to work today? The office. What's the weather like today? The temperature is 18 degrees with a 57% chance of rain. Are you ready to start your day? Mm, give me 10 minutes. Okay. How would you like to get there? I'll walk. Do you want to ride? No, I'm good. Thank you. Careful, Amy. Obstacle ahead. Nearly there. Good time, Amy. Good morning, Amy. Welcome to JLL. You have one message from William Douglas. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Your first meeting is at 10.30. Please proceed to the elevators. Have a good day. And you. Lisa is in today. Lunch? Good for me. Invite sent. Have you seen the latest report? No. Your coffee will be ready in five, four, three, two, one. Thank you. Tip sent. This building uses sensors to make your day more productive. Need a desk? Maybe later. Sure. How's the temperature? It's fine. Ready to start your meeting with Eloise Dupont? I am indeed. I'll let her know. Bonjour, Amy. Ça va? Bonjour, Eloise. Hold on. Auto translating. Vous avez vérifié le document que je vous ai envoyé? Yeah. All looks great. Thanks very much. Au revoir. Bonne journée. Au revoir. Merci. Are you happy to share your building usage data today? Have a great evening, Amy. Plan for route home. Stop navigation. Navigation off. Send a message to Tom. Are we still okay for the meeting tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock? Message sent. Would you like to switch to personal mode? Yes, please. Personal mode. Work mode returns 7 a.m. tomorrow. Confirm. Have a nice evening, Amy. Enjoy the sunset. Good night, Jill. So, that's an employee in the modern uh, work day. So, did you see anything from the video that made sense? Did you? So, the guy who, who has been talking to Emmy is our personal assistant. And those days, they used to be Typist, right? We write on paper, give to them to type. 
Sometimes we call them confidential secretary. But I think they've disappeared now from, from the workplace. Now, eh? they are still in government. <laughs> anyway, government is changing, right? I, I work with uh, government in Lagos, and I know a lot is happening in the public service of Lagos State today. Uh, so, from the time the army w uh, woke up in the morning to the time she closed from work, she never interacted with a colleague. Did you notice that? She even held a meeting in a language she do not understand, in French. And she used auto-translator for the meeting. She was speaking English, the guy in France was hearing it in French. The guy was speaking French, she was hearing it in English. And they signed the contract in the same day. They were doing odd desking. I remember in 2019, we wanted to do a project for Dangote in the catering industry. And because of the specialists that are required for the refinery, they needed people that can cook special cuisines in the four different regions of China. So I, I was forced to travel to China for that recruitment in January of 2019. I had to hire a lawyer, Rosen Liu, I think uh, Wednesday was his birthday. Who traveled, I had to pay for him to travel with me to all the cities. And they are far, seven hours, eight hours from each other to just consume those contracts after the conversation to interpret. But today, there is a pilot. There is one thing you can buy on Amazon now. You call it pilot. So if, it's avail if it was available then, or if I knew then, maybe I, I wouldn't have needed to actually contact Rosin Liu to actually support me for that recruitment and contracting. Because I'll be speaking English to them, I'll just need to give them a, a pair of pilots, airboard. And I hold one. I speak English, they understand French. They speak French, uh, in, uh, Chinese. I understand English. And then we can actually translate. And there are tools today that are able to actually do commercial contracts. In fact, there was one tool I understand what will take Harvard law school professors, about seven of them a week, to review, interpret in terms of contractual documents. That, doc that tool will actually do it in five minutes. And so it's really very important for us to get to understand some of these things. Now, um, I've seen a lot of this course in the space. There was a time it was Global Comms Turn. We, we said um, they are not increasing the salaries of the people at the call center. How many of us remember that story on Twitter, trending for so many days? But those of us that are technical professionals, I saw so many people tag me on uh, Twitter to say, we want to hear what you have to say about this. But if you're a technical person, you understand how job architectures are designed in organization. So you call it job evaluation, determining the internal world of jobs in the hierarchy of jobs in the company. And so, if a call center job is a ceiling job, I remember when we started Globalcom, uh, the customer service director was Maria Spenzi. When we started, a German woman. I think as at last year, somebody still reached out from, from the call center to me. He said, ah, you're still in Globalcom, 20 something years? He said, ah, Maria has not retired. She's still the director. <laughs> so, for ceiling jobs, if you will need to move and rise, you either do lateral into another organization, into in the same organization, or you move out of the organization. Are you getting what I'm trying to talk about at all? So, I can use Slack today for my call center. Slack will, will be available 247. Slack will not need to go to toilet. There is nothing like uh, this call is going to be monitored for quality assurance, and so on and so forth, right? Slack does not need to book maternity leave and expect that I should. I'm not saying that that is wrong. Are you getting my message, please? Please, I don't want to be misinterpreted. But what I'm just trying to say is that there are so many tools that can do this thing easily today. In my organization today, we use zero for our financials. And I don't need to, to do big, your big info FMS on systems or Oracle or SAP. Zero, we do the same thing. Very short on demand tools that as young person 
trying to grow your career, for example, in finance, you need to know about. So that uh, the accountants will not tell you we need to stay at a hotel for five days. And then they extend it to six days. We are doing management account, consuming company money for nothing. So if you can get an O-level person or ND person who can do correct debit and credit posting, at the end of the month, 11.59, boom, submit, generate your income statement, p &L, and so on and so forth. So for example, in, in, in the video we just shared now, if you are trying to look for a job or you are trying to change a job, that means the way you will look for the job is different. Because we now have ATS, right? Applicant tracking system. You, you keep applying. And they are not inviting you for interview. And you are saying, oh, it's man, no man. It's no man, no man. Most of the tools that are being used to shortlist today, whether through Zoho or any of Atlassian or any of these tools, have artificial intelligence, machine learning algorithms tied to competency definitions in them. And what those tools are looking for are keywords in your CV. So instead of paying DSTV subscription for the month, go to a professional to understand how to identify those keys, keywords on your CV so that you can even get called for interview. Because if you don't get called, you will not get interviewed. If you don't get interviewed, you will not be employed. So getting a job itself is a job. I think my time is up, but let me just paraphrase around different areas that you can actually use technology. Let me not just follow through my, my slide now because of time. One area is communication today. If you are employed into, another organi into any organization today and you want to be able to communicate effectively, either as a manager to the team or as a team member working with managers, a lot of organizations are spread between on-site and remote now. So a lot of teams are working in distributed fashion. So you need to be familiar with the tools that are used to actually aid modern communication at work. In my organization, there are so many meetings we can have on Zoom or Microsoft Teams or, or Google Hangout where people don't have to put on their video. But if I get into a meeting and say, this morning, I want all videos on, everybody knows that it is serious business. It's a serious meeting. So you need to be familiar with a lot of these tools. There is go -to meeting. There is Gumzo uh, from Kenya. There are so many tools today that people are using to enable communication. You should be familiar with how to use a lot of these tools, irrespective of whether it is what is used in your organization or not. Again, another area of work is collaboration. So today, because teams are distributed, they work in remote fashion. People are working from home. You must be able to manage. I remember the MD of System Specs reached out to me uh, about two months ago saying, oh, we are trying to come back to work. Can you please advise on how we can manage? Some people still want to work remotely and all this stuff. So I, was, I asked him five questions. He couldn't answer yes to any of them. I said, Oga, you have not started. Because you need to have a process digitized, ma uh, documented manually. And then you can monitor it remotely. Right. So if you are to be employed in such an organization and you know how to do that, it's an opportunity for you. Like I said, a job is a solution to a problem. Right? So there are so many collaboration tools that organizations are using today. You have Jira. You have Slack. In my organization, we use Jira. We use Slack. We use Trello. We use Smart Sheets to track corporate plans. Uh, people use Google Spaces for communication. We use Data Studio. We use Power BI. And f I, I, I used to look at myself five years down the line. How was I managing? In Genesis, I was managing seven companies. And yet, I have to travel up and down to actually support all this. Well, today, nine countries, but I don't need to be jumping up and down. Everything, as people are working on Google Sheets, is plugged to the data studio, populated on Power BI. All I need for each of the markets and country or job function, I identify five key metrics that matter. And as people are working even on Excel, it's populated, and I can see the trends one by one. I think I just need to pause here. Yeah? I think the time, if there is opportunity. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Um, a warm um, applause for Mr. Ologun. Thank you. Um, before um, I introduce the next speaker, um, I would like to recognize the presence of um, some of our panelists. Um, I would like to recognize uh, Mr. Albert Afolabi.
Please, a round of applause for Mr. Albert. Please come forward, Mr. Afolabi. Please move to the front. Um, I'd also like to introduce Jumoke Aleoke Malakai Jam, as she's popularly known. Please come forward. Um, I also have Of course, we have um, uh, Eliana Philip um, Amaru. Thank you for coming. Um, so, um, um, I hope we're excited. I hope we've um, learned, we've taken um, something out of this um, first session. So, we'll be moving on to the next speaker. Um, I don't know if we have a bio up. Apologies for that. Okay, I'll quickly introduce our next speaker. I'm not sure if we have our bio up there. Um, so our next speaker is Lola Esson. Um, I'll read her profile if it's not up. She holds a master's degree in international Fantastic. management from Queen Mary University, London, and a first degree in communication and language arts from the University of Ibadan. She is a member of the Chartered Institute of Personnel Management and holds certifications in PRINCE II and GPHR. In the course of her career, she has worked extensively in the areas of organization design and development, culture and change management, human resources planning, psychometric and managerial proficiency assessments, and compensation and benefits planning for a wide array of clients within the public and private sectors. Lola started her formal career as a media officer in the World Health Organization, Switzerland. She has also previously worked within the HR consulting practices of a big four firm, Philips Consulting Limited, including a stint as head human capital of Cornerstone Insurance PLC. Today, Lola practices a trade as the partner in charge of the Workforce Advisory Services practice of Ernst & Young, West Africa. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Lola Esson. So Lola Esson will be speaking on, please. So she will be talking on digital skills needed to thrive in the workplace. Please a round of applause for Lola Esson. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. You know, I've heard that my profile read so many times and kind of feels weird sometimes. It's really nice to be here and uh, thank you so much uh, for the invitation. My brother, thanks for doing a good job setting me up. I think I'm just going to ride on that. So this morning, I would be speaking to you um, about digital skills to thrive in the workplace. So the speaker before me did good to set the context. And I sat here thinking how different really life has Just a few days ago, I was, I was at a conference, and I heard a song in the background. So I turned to the next person and said, what song is that? And she goes, oh, we'll just shazam it. And she opened her phone, and we saw the name of the person. So that's the reality. It's really instant noodles. It's instant, instant. So hopefully this morning, we will be talking about the skills we need to thrive in an instant, uh, what I'd like to call an instant world, an instant society. I'll wait for my slides to come up. Um, any luck? Is it coming up? Thank you. So I think the first thing I want to say is digital is not new. Even though we tend to think it's something, it's a new concept, it's a new trend, digital is definitely not new. And I think the speaker before me had set the context to say, look, um, it's not just using email. It's not just browsing, because some people make that mistake to say, oh, yeah, I can browse, I can do that, so that means I'm digital. It's a whole bunch of skills, really, that talks about your ability to, yes, use the internet, but thrive in an actively or a consciously mobile society, a socially connected one, of course, he's done a good job talking about the characteristics of the digital era. So if you look on screen, you see that as early as 1982, the vending machines itself is some form of digitization. And of course, we've built on past that. 1994 was actually when the first uh, pizza was ordered digitally. 
So it almost sounds sometimes like the present is the past in reverse or in continuum. But the point is, digital is now the set of skills or our reality. So if you're going to thrive in what is now our reality, we clearly would begin to reconsider some of the things we do differently. And of course, he talked about the famous 33, what was that, Nokia? I actually didn't use it. I was deliberate to not use it. But yes, all the things you said are quite correct. So let's look a bit at um, what the society looks like. Obviously, you've heard the term um, fourth industrial revolution. Of course, we've had revolutions before this time. The first, of course, was mechanical. The second was electrical. The third was really when we started seeing a lot of automation coming up. But the fourth really is pioneered by digital. So we are now living in four era, as they say. And to do that, of course, it's a connected society. So remember I said one of the key features of being digitalized is the fact that you are able to connect or thrive socially. So you are now living in a society where a lot of things, as we saw from that beautiful video, from when the employee woke up to when her day ended, she didn't have a lot of human interaction, but she had a fairly successful day. So that really is the reality of the era of the times we're in. Now what are some of the things we're seeing? Look, once upon a time when you launched technology. It took you so long, you would do all kinds of trials, beta, testing, this, that, that. Today, the experts are saying it's 35 days for new technology to meet a critical mass of 50 million users. So think about what that means in terms of it took years to launch something and now it's 35 days, one month plus four days, give or, give or take. So for those of us in the room who are innovators, who are, you know, we're, we're, we're entrepreneurs, you really don't have the luxury of a long time before you, because the minute you're thinking about it, it's already old model and the next one is on the way. So we obviously have to keep innovating in a society that thrives on instant. 87% of customers are looking for a more seamless experience. I tend to think it's higher because these days it's even very customized. So you and I can subscribe to the same bank, same product, but we're looking for different experiences. It's the same way people say, people are not going to work today for employment, they're going to work for experiences. So you can have the same organization, but it would give different people the opportunity to cater to, or rather to get satisfaction from the different things that matter to them. So it's become important in the digital era to begin to think in very customized terms. So standardization would not work in the digital era because people are motivated by different things. We have about 50 billion, um, so we have a connection chaos. In this case, we have about 50 billion items. So we're talking about the Internet of Things, and we saw it from that video. Every single thing was connected from her coffee to her commute home. So we're talking chaos when it comes to how connected things are. These days, fridges are ordering milk, sugar, whatever it is. You can program all of those things. Even your shopping, you can program for okay, when you want to replenish your bread, your milk. So everything is thriving and is built around digital. So obviously you cannot be thinking of walking into the digital age with your, what was, what, you said things are manual or so, you can't be thinking, aha, uh -huh. you can't be thinking analog in a digital era, and that certainly is the reality. Now, the experts are also saying in three short years, 75% of the global workforce would be made up of digital natives. That's actually my reality today where I work. We have about 75% millennials. So of course, you can imagine how much we spend on tech and how much we spend on making sure things are really interesting. So for example, we haven't gone back to work uh, because we realize that work is going on. And so I haven't gone to work in, I think the last time I had a straight Monday to Friday time at work was probably five years ago. So you can see that some of us have been in that digital era before now. So let's look at what is really triggering this change. And I think you've heard some of it already, so I won't dwell too much. One is the data economy. Data is now the new oil. Every day we're generating data. Even in this room, as we are sitting here listening to this session, we're generating so much data. So it's important that if you're going to build a society or a workplace, data has to be at the center of what you're doing or how you're designing work. Digital experience. In this case, I mentioned people are looking for experiences, not employment. So I should be able to work for the same organization, but because the stage I'm at in life is I just want to touch buttons, I don't want to see or interact with people, I should be able to get that same for whoever wants to go in, sit down, and feel very comfortable. So we're having a lot of hybrid workspaces. I have said to a few of my clients who are talking about, oh, how do we return to work? I've said, look, you know what? It's not sustainable to be thinking of a work environment that is going back to Monday to Friday, nine to five. 
and that is regardless of whether you are in um, extractive industry, we will just have to make it work because that's the mindset we're at now. That's what people are looking for. That is certainly the expectation. And if 75% of the potential workforce is going to be a workforce, I beg your pardon, is going to be digital, made up of digital natives, then you clearly have a work environment that are not suited for the employees you'll be hiring from. So that you're not left behind if you're an employer in the room who still thinks, I need to open the door and see all my employees. It's not a sustainable business model. Of course, generations at work. Today is probably the first time we have five generations at work. If it's an owner founder one, that's quite possible. But what we're seeing is the different generations want different things. I am not in the school of thoughts that criticizes millennials, by the way. I think we have a lot of the advancements we see. We have them to thank for a lot of the advancements we see. I definitely work in a team that has almost 100% millennials, so it impacts and influences the way I work. It also happens that being fully remote has been one of my successful years as a P&L owner. So that means clearly the issue is not remote work, but how we're managing people or how we have set up the work environment or the people who we've hired. We're also looking increasingly at a global workforce and flexible workforce. Again, the jackpot syndrome can also be a good thing if we look at it differently. I tend to tell people a lot of these guys are not working into ready-made jobs. They want the experience of living abroad, which, which is valid, right? You can understand why. But it doesn't mean they hate your organization. So is it possible to rethink what we're doing with when our critical talents say they are moving to Canada? I think we need to revisit options to actually still have them work with us. And I certainly know some companies that are doing that in Nigeria, by the way. They've given people the opportunity to go away. And I think one particular company, I wouldn't do free advert for anyone, gave people the opportunity to work months abroad. Of course, the traditional, oh, taxes will suffer. There's policies and strategies to manage these things. We've got to change the way we think in a digital environment. It's not a nice to have anymore. It's a must have. And then, of course, the concept of work-life integration. Once upon a time, it was work-life balance, which kind of gave the suggestion that one must give way for the other. But I think we agree that the two can work in tandem because at the end of the day, you see one human being who is capable of doing so many things and so much more. The work they do is just one aspect. And people are realizing that there is no need for me to sacrifice who I am, what I like, because I want to work with you. Which is why I keep saying people are looking for experiences and not employment. So the workplace must allow the full individual to come to work and be all of the things they like. A lot of people are making more money from their side hustles than their nine to five. So you better embrace it and create a situation where we can align the two interests so we don't suffer. Because the war for talent is real. At the same time, jackpot is real. And then, sadly, people are at home instead of in school. So there are a lot of challenges. So we need to revisit what we're doing about what the workplace is in a digital era. And then, of course, purpose being a very important thing. A lot of studies have been done to show that these days, for people to work with you, your salary is no longer good enough. So if you're in this room and all you have to offer me is a good salary, and we know some sectors that people earn a lot of money, but they don't have the health, the time, the mindset to even enjoy the money they make. So people are asking questions. So it is important that the workplace is also one that is designed around purpose. And we will see a greater shift to that as we embrace digital. Because even though your website says, oh, this is who I am, or you, you're granting a TV interview, and you're saying, oh, this is our employer value proposition, but people are checking Glassdoor, LinkedIn. By the way, I don't subscribe to those interesting resignations that we're seeing of recent. But people are doing all sorts. So there is that collaboration, there's that collocation of different platforms of, of information. So the era of this is who I am, this is how I've said it, this is how I look in public does not count anymore. People are asking questions that if you say this is who you are, beyond the money you're making, what are you contributing to the environment? It is now a big recruitment tool actually when it comes to your purpose. We certainly at EY, even from our payoff, it's built around purpose. And it's something we're very, very proud of, building a better working world. And so from day one, that example is very clear in how we do everything from finding, training, developing our people. Which, as I said, we have a lot of millennials, but work is going on. We're doing all the things that matter to us. So it's a charge to everyone in the room. Let's move beyond the traditional things, the traditional offerings that would make people work with us, join us, or stay with us. I, I want to move on quickly. So now we're talking about the digital workplace. And when you talk about, essentially, when you look at the workplace, there are three key types of workplace. So today, is, the focus is on digital. But I think we've established that cultural ways of working, leadership, ultimately will determine how successful an organization is. People don't leave bad organizations, they leave bad managers or bad leaders. 
So I think once that's clear, we should have that understanding. Now, the digital workplace is one where user-centric digital tools enable knowledge sharing, collaboration, regardless of time, place, and setting. Please pay attention to that definition. Remember in our commerce, who remembers how they define their business? A business is a place that comes together to use resources for the purpose of generating profits. I did commerce or business studies back in the day. I remember it was something like that. But the digital workplace is talking about knowledge sharing. So knowledge is also what a data set. It's very expensive. It's hard to replace. It's hard to develop. It's also quickly, it also quickly obsoletes itself. So if you're going to talk about sharing knowledge, the digital workplace is one where you now no longer have barriers. And I'll talk about some of the skills and some of the nuances we need to lose uh, some Nigerians, but not all. Now, the digital workplace, it's one that allows you leverage. Most people say, I work in America, ah, there's politics. Politics is, has its place, don't get me wrong. Even in a digital uh, workplace, it does. But people are like, hey, you know what? I'm competing with this person. Target, this one, that one. The digital workspace is one where what you know today by tomorrow is no longer useful, no longer important, because someone has built on it. I tend to tell some of my younger colleagues that if I tell you to do something and I give you a document and I say, you know what, take this as an example and build on it. If you send me back the same thing, what you have done is you have failed the organization because you starved the organization of the opportunity of improvement. So initially they had that puzzle. Look, I said, yeah, it's very simple. The version you got is version one. If we all kept recycling version one, then where's our competitive advantage? So a lot of the skill sets you would need as employees or employers in the digital space would require that we change our orientation to what knowledge is. Knowledge empowers. Knowledge is meant for sharing. Same for when I tell some of my clients, these are your guys that don't want to go and leave. You need to ask them to go. Deliberately actually do not promote people who have not groomed or trained their successor. But a lot of people are happy to be the only one who can do the work. And if they're not around, business stops. That is not the mindset that is sustainable in the digital workspace. It would not work. And then let's look at what work looks like now. Oh, I think I've gone too fast. Okay. So if you look at what work was in the past, I'm not going to dwell on that. I think we're all leaving that area. And I hope um, organizations, more people are seeing the need to make the switch to what work today looks like. The first thing is we now have an era of work anywhere, anytime. I mentioned that at EY, we've not gone back to work. EY Nigeria, actually. Globally, we all have, we're, we're free to do what we like. And that's because we have tools that allow people to report on the work they do. I always tell people something very funny. If you send me an email, apologies to all my clients that may be listening. If you send me an email at 3 a.m., you are likely to get a response. Maybe not so if you send it at 9 a.m. But that doesn't mean I'm not efficient or effective. It just means that I'm a nocturnal person who prefers to work when everywhere is probably quiet. But if I was in the old era, I, I, would be, I would be struggling because I would never meet all my targets or my deadlines. And then if you look at the time people spend commuting to work, especially Lagos, 9 to 5 is really not tenable because I would have left my house at 4. Some people actually leave at 4. I get in at 9. Then there's all the chit chat, what happened, blah, 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 blah. blah. We talk, talk, talk. Maybe 10, 11. And then by 12, you're dreading the traffic that you're seeing out of your window. And so really, 12, you're already afraid of when you leave at 5. You're planning the route. So how much quality, really, does the employer get from you from a productive day? But digital opportunities allow you really set your time, set the context. You can build work around your life. So hence the point of work-life integration. One should not give way for the other. It's also one that favors experiments. Team, we've always done it like this, so it must be the only way. That's not tenable in the new world, which is why young people today, even though a lot of us who have traditional upbringing consider it an upfront, when you tell the average 8, 9, 10-year-old, do this, they would ask you, why? I remember one time, I wanted my 10-year-old son to do something, and I asked him for something else. He just said, may I have your phone? I gave it to him, just said, Google, or was it Alexa I said or something? And then the answer came out. And I thought, it wouldn't even have occurred to me to do it. But so, so digital natives, they're born in that era. They do not know any other life. And those are your future employees or colleagues, by the way. And you would have to adjust because there is more of them than more of us din dinosaurs. So we would need to adjust. <laughs> the workplace today is also focused on outcomes. Team I service. I came in at 8. On time, I left at 5, or I waited at work till my ogre finished at 10. 
But when it comes to output or productivity, the company is not quite seeing the results. So that means in this new workplace, some people might get the full value of their eight hours in two hours, which is why we also say, look, these days, oh, two years is a new 10 years. So why are we waiting to offer? So you must work with me 20 years to make manager. And what I get at the end of that 20 years is watch, deep freezer, all of those things. So it's changing a lot of things, a lot of things. So if it's also focused on outcomes, it means that the conversations would also be very rich. You want me to do A, then what exactly do you want me to do in return? Now for you to thrive in an environment that measures outcomes, not activities, a lot of us, we need to change our concept of how work should be done. That's one challenge. It's also one that builds trust. And it goes without saying, if we both agree that the understanding of the expectation is clear, then we know that, okay, this is what good looks like, and we're committed to that good. Same for, and, and that applies to benefits, the way work is structured, the pay, all of those things I talked about earlier on, all bothers or are all built around trust. So the future workplace or the digital workplace is one that has a very high trust um, quotient. I think I've gone ahead. Okay, okay. So let's look a bit more about, uh, let's look a bit more into working in a digital workspace because that's at the end of the day the focus of my paper. And I won't dwell too much on it because I think the first speaker has done a good job of setting the context. But some of the things you should expect to see in an environment that is digitally enabled is one, dashboards. So the concept of I came to work early, I carried your bag, uh, I did this, I waited before I went when my guy was working does not work anymore because if you're measuring outcomes, then a dashboard will show you performance versus agreement or ask or whatever it is. So it's an environment that tracks performance real time. So again, if you are the kind of person who prefers to wait to be told what to do, you're not using initiative, you're not the type who challenges status quo, definitely in a digital workspace you will struggle because you cannot greet the computer over greet it. You can't say, I've cleaned the box, I will change your plug. You can't. It is garbage in, garbage out. You, what you get is, I mean, what you, what you give it is what you get out of it. Another key feature is communities, which might be a bit strange, right? Because for us as Africans, the concept of community is where my cousin, my brother were chit-chatting. But as you can see from that video we saw at the end of the first run, that employee interacted with different communities. There was no barrier of time, geography, or language. So a digital environment is definitely one that would require that you work with not just physical communities, but virtual communities. So the team, we don't do like this in my family. We don't do like this in our office. We've always done it like this. It's not like this in Nigeria. You will increasingly struggle to thrive in a digital workspace because those concepts, those barriers, those biases have no place in that kind of society. It's also one that is heavily social. So it's built on social networks. I know, unfortunately, social network these days in Nigeria is down to dancing on TikTok and all those interesting challenges. But there are actually other... Uh, well, I don't use the word beneficial because that's also beneficial if that's your mindset. So it's also one that requires that you work and interact in social networks. And those networks could be on the basis of your interests or things you want to aspire to learn. And the beauty of net social networks, by the way, it doesn't restrict you. You know, before, if you worked in an organization, all you had was that organization. Today, if you work in an organization that has Yama and the likes, you have a topic you're interested in, like, I mean, EY is so funny. You have people who are surfing, people who take pictures of sunsets. They do all of those things, and they put it on the Yama network. Because the point is, you recognize that the individual who comes to work to you does not have only one interest or capability. So social networks are also a good way to nurture the experience people are looking for by coming to work with you. Then Knowledge Hub. At the end of the day, because knowledge obsolete is first itself so fast in the digital space, you need to have a way of harnessing or storing it for future use. Or even building on so so if, of course for you to know what level what level two looks like, you must understand what level one is. So it allows you also get access to information to build on. So you're not reinventing the wheel always. So knowledge management is also a key feature. So if you're not somebody who understands how to get information or use research, you would struggle to thrive in such a society. And then virtual and hybrid collaboration. I think all of us have PhDs in that, hopefully. You know, if you're working formally, you've had the course to do a WhatsApp meeting, even if you don't have the sophisticated um, collaboration tools. But I'm sure we all kind of have an idea. In the early days of the webinar, of course, remember all those screensavers, death by webinar. I know I had a bit of PTSD from those Teams calls and all of those things. But I think we've all gone through it. 
So it's also one skill you need. So I think now we don't hear as much. You're on mute, you're on mute. Or your camera is off. Did you mean to show us your camera? So all kinds of things. I think we've, we've gone through a lot these past two years, but I think it's definitely made us better. It's definitely made us a lot more prepared for the digital workplace. And then, of course, business applications. Gone are the days when you have a problem with your computer, then you go to the IT department and call these guys. I'll just come. So what's the problem here? You know, they have this swag. People who did IT back in the day. They say, okay, no, just turn it off. I'm going to. Now, if you don't understand basic troubleshooting, then you don't have a place in an organization because there's nobody who is. These days, you're even interacting with a computer. Who tells you raise a ticket? Which brings me to my next point. Meet your future colleague, the cobots. So if you are not, if you are the kind of person who needs to see the person that will come and say, Ben, okay, touch the screen there, do this, do that. These days, you just get a ticket explaining what you need to do. The Apple phone does not have manual, but somehow we all use it, even though these days, YouTube videos showing you that you're using only 10% of it, but it's okay. The 10% I have is enough. So you have to also not only learn to work in an increasingly diverse digital environment, you have to understand what it takes to work with your cobots, your colleagues are robots, because they also have rights. They have a place, and you must learn what it is to work with. I mean, you saw from that video, she said to the robot, so the assistant was a robot, actually. Have a nice day, she said, have a nice day, too. So they're interacting. Alexia will do the same for you. So imagine your grandmother, grandfather, hearing you talk to some round object, and then you see the three dots. Like, ah, nobody wins with that. But that is now almost like normal or expected. And let's look at some of the things that even moving operations. I mean, I think the speaker before me talked about the fact that call center, um, there was this whole brouhaha about whether or not they should get increments. And it's a very simple conversation to really, uh, I mean, the analogy is simple. In the initial days, because it was a new uncharted territory, you had to pay a lot to get people to join. But as we mastered what it is to do customer service, as we moved some of those things to RPA, to robots, it no longer made the job worth that high, which is why we're not paying them. So if you're going to really move out of that or focus on another area of that same service, you have got to go and acquire what? Acquire what? And also knowledge. So at the end of the day, thriving in the new world requires a lot of emphasis and investment on skills. Organizations have been able to bring down their costs. And this is an average, by the way, study done by EY, by about 80%. In HR, imagine bringing out 80% of your cost because you decided to hire a few robots. And guess what? It's a win-win situation. They don't have sick days. They don't feel bad that they were spoken to anyhow. They would not log or um, we, they wouldn't log things on whistleblowing because they didn't like how they were feeling. They would not ask for leave or day off. They would not go on strike. You know all those kind of things. And I'm sure if you think about a lot of large organizations, you know things like how many leave days do I have? And what is my HMO plan? All of those things, you can, be, you can get them now by interacting with a robot. So the future world will require, and then you saw the video uh, which we watched. A lot of the things she did, there were interactions with robots in humanoid form. But at the end of the day, it is a thing and it is here to stay. And you can't say, ah, you know, what I cannot see or hold to me sound like a spirit. And in the spirit realm. So we, we have to drop a lot of our biases and things holding us back, essentially. But let me move on quickly. Okay. So, a well-functioning digital workplace would give you, in addition to all the things we've talked about, one is efficiency. So, I don't believe that machines will replace people. If, if anything else, people would develop or will have to upskill themselves to be able to work efficiently with machines or robots. As I showed you in the previous sample, the average cost savings HR departments have made by introducing digital is 80%. Of course, for any business leader, that is exciting, seeing that most times your OPEX, a lot of the chunk, goes to HR matters. So again, it's not an option. I mean, we did a project in financial service. Remember when the ATM machines took your cards then, back in the day? It would take you weeks or months to write all sorts of letters. We did a lot of work in EY around those things you see that are now done in minutes, those reversals. Think about the cost. Before, you have to write or send a letter to the branch in Dutse, where they took your card. Then they will print new card, all sorts of things. Or the money went, they will first of all check, they, all of those things. So look at how much transformation has happened around services. Now think about what will happen if we, as human beings, truly get on board digital. 
it would also give us engagement so engagement is not only from seeing each other face to face because now you can still collaborate virtually you can still do a lot of things i mean i do a lot of projects that involve 16 or more ey countries once upon a time would have had to travel to all those countries imagine the cost tickets travel time wear and tear on my body and even delays in the job but now we do those things we get we just get on teams we agree we drop the reports on the team sites all of us can edit at the same time all of those things is possible these days with digital and then of course innovation because you are now in the realm of something that obsoletes itself pretty quickly it requires a different approach to doing things so the minute it's done it's already old that's the approach now in the workplace when digital is involved so what are the skills ultimately we need to build because that would be very important i've said a lot about skills already yes but i particularly summarize everything i have said so far in these eight points one is communication skills even though you are not talking but there are many ways of talking with digital sad to say a lot of people can still not send a proper email remember i said if you don't like where you are you've got to go and acquire knowledge or the skills to change some people still send you email with all caps all caps is as good as shouting to me some people send you documents that have not been properly formatted with a hundred fonts what that tells me about you as a person is that you lack attention to detail so it is still communication so you must hone your skills both verbal written body language if i came here for example and i'm talking and my hands in my pocket oh yeah it could be that i'm cool because i know i'm cool but i know it's not the right opportunity or the right platform to do that so we must learn the right way to behave or to respond to certain things creativity you have got to be creative to thrive in the digital world what you thought it was yesterday by today will change and sometimes it's even a trigger or something that is totally out of your control so creativity would mean bringing ideas and that also means for those of us that are employers there is no room for saying somebody is doing rubbish or nonsense because creativity means out of the box what you have not imagined you definitely haven't had ideas that have changed humanity on the back of normal it's always something truly 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 uh, innovative credibility now another challenge that has happened with digital is because people feel that there is a diminished interaction and because we're used to if i can hold you see you touch you then that means it is but i talked about trust you cannot be credible if you are not trustworthy so if you're the kind of person that we were already looking for you in a physical world then clearly in the digital world to be a challenge because i would not really trust that you're able to do the work so for us as employees there is a huge need to make sure that what we say we will do it we do it and by when we say we'll do it it's only then that even in the digital world people will not see the need to micromanage or say no 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 for you you must work nine to five because i'm not sure that you'll be able to do what it is now of course we would this is not the same as the people who have certain biases about women to say oh because you have a child uh it means that you would not be able to work well successfully digitally so apologies i have a repetition there i didn't see that so cognitive flexibility this is also your brain being able to accept that things might not be the way you see them yeah i'm almost done but it's good i always like an extra sheet of paper thank you yeah i'm good thank you so cognitive flexibility also means your brain being able to see different perspectives to the same issue maybe yesterday worked for you but today might not be the same way and you have to be able to ad adopt that so that is important so all the this is not how they taught me this is not how we did it it doesn't work like that all of those things would handicap you significantly in a digital workspace you also need to be emotionally intelligent self-awareness being the most important or well, all three are important but i want to stress that which is you be really being aware of how your actions or inaction impact others and that's a key skill you need to thrive in a digital workspace so maybe you're like me and the only time you are awake is 3 a.m but others cannot be awake at 3 a.m because it's not convenient i would need to have that adjustment so most times when i send my team members emails i also i'm not expecting a reply at that time i just sent it because i was awake then of course you need to be inclusive inclusive is a very interesting topic because we now know that there are different types of human beings triggered by different needs and preferences if you're going to thrive in a digital workspace because you're working with people in other countries and regions whose practices beliefs might not be the same as yours you're not doing yourself any favors when we express some of those strong views we cannot agree to disagree and i'm sure you know some of the topics i'm talking about it is very important that our mindsets adjust to be able to accommodate the fact that 
there are different preferences, there are different needs, there are different types of people, and there are different belief systems, and all of them have a place in the workplace. Agile working, which also means your ability, agility generally, I think that word has been used a great deal, same for resilience, so I won't even bother to define that for us. And then of course, and then of course we have, um, yeah, so I'm done because I have a repetition on the last point. So anyway, I have a quick video, all within my five minutes. Can you please play the video? Thank you. So please listen to the video because I have a quiz for you afterwards. Faster than ever. Macroeconomic trends and technology advances, including smart devices and AI, are altering industries, businesses, professions and jobs at an unprecedented scale and rate. And the disruption for professionals is real. Five million jobs may cease to exist. The traditional employer-employee relationship is already shifting. We're moving into the human cloud, where four in ten of us will be on contract, not in permanent jobs, by 2020. Successful future professionals will be those who continuously learn and adapt both their skills and themselves. Based on global research and insights, we've identified the future skills that matter. Complex problem solving, creativity, emotional intelligence, cognitive flexibility, collaboration. With these, you'll always be in demand. And you'll need to adapt yourself to the new world of work. Have self-reliance, resilience, self-promote, and constantly develop yourself. But crucially, don't do it all on your own, because networks will be even more critical. So if you can continuously adapt, the developments around you will no longer be a threat. Instead, change becomes an opportunity. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to conclude by reminding us, don't take your old self into the new normal, but my very good friend, Mr. Yemi Fashion, thank you so much for the opportunity. Thank you very much, Lola Esso. Thank you very much. So we have... I know that we have loads and loads and loads of questions. Very soon we'll be having our panelists up here to answer our questions and to also share with us on digital, um, on thriving in a digital workplace. So if you have questions for our fiscal audience, please do well to write them on a sheet of paper and um, you could pass to the last person on the row so that our shares will pick them up. Something wonderful is happening online. We currently have on YouTube over 200 um, YouTubers streaming and um, having some conversations about this program. Thank you so much, our online streamers. I just want to read through as we prepare for, while we prepare for um, the panelist conversation. So Femi says, okay, Meshach says interesting. Timothy is saying it feels good to be here. And um, Tech says, this is amazing light this day. That means it's getting some insights and some answers to the questions on his mind concerning the topic. All right. Shagun says, you cannot remain analogy in a digital era. Very correct. Very correct. All right, Adelodon says, great talk and so much to learn. Please maximize, maximize this opportunity. Um, if you have questions, put them down. Also, my YouTube audience, if you have questions, please go ahead and post your questions in the chat area. We will take them. All right, Favor says, a job is a solution to a problem. And Timeleni says, the first and second speakers were really helpful. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir and ma'am. All right, so before we move to the panel, uh, to the panelists where we take questions and answers, uh, first of all, I need to recognize uh, Pastor Solomon the, and members of the board. 
and management of the Daystar Career Development Program. Please put your hands together. Thank you very much. So I saw him around. I don't know if he has left. Thank you very much. And every other members of the, yeah, of the team as well. Thank you very much for your presence. Okay, before we move on, I'm sure that you have learned quite a thing from our first and second speaker. So we're just gonna do a bit of an exercise. I need you to turn to that person next to you and share you know, something that you learned, something that stood out for you. It could be from the first speaker, it could be from the second speaker. Yeah, just face that person and have this short conversation. I can see people smiling. <laughs> <laughs> I don't feel like talking. Leave me alone. All right. Okay, so action. Let's go. Whether you're smiling, yes, smile and action. Yes, yes, yes. Some people are looking at the phone. Hello, ma. This is not time for phone looking. Yes. This is not time for, for phone looking. Yes, have that conversation. Yeah, if there's no one by your side, you can face the person in front or face the person at the back and share something that stood out for you. I'm sure you have something to learn. Something that stood out for you. Something that stood out for you. First speaker, second speaker. You can't... Uh, uh, what's going on? For my online audience, please let us know. I want to see your comments on the comment um, on the chat area on what stood out for you so far from the first and second speakers sessions that we've had so please go on and let's see your comments by the way if you're tweeting uh, please do well to hashtag dcdp digital let's trend online i can still see some people just sitting down it's wrong go very wrong very wrong are we learning something This is share and learn session, session 101. Okay. Are you tweeting to that person or you are speaking to that person? Now, um, shortly before we would do the presentation for the panel, uh, to bring up our panel up, I need to do a special thank you. Hello? Can you pause for a few seconds? Alexa, can you pause everybody? Oh, it's Google Assistant. Okay, I want to do a special, this is a special thank you before the thank you to our two speakers. How many of us know that this time yesterday they were not in Nigeria? This time yesterday, our two speakers. Can we give them a round of applause? Uh, for the honor they've given to this star career, strangely, I sent a message at 12, 11 a.m. I got a reply at 12, at 11 p.m. I just got into the country. I'm heading home. I will set alarm. I thought that was the end, though. I still chatted up to almost midnight. Then at 7 a.m., the person that said she was going to set alarm was still chatting me at 7.30 a.m. Thank you so much, ma. Yesterday, I got a call on WhatsApp, and I was wondering, why is this somebody calling me on WhatsApp? Ah, Shegun, you know, I am in so-so and so place now. My flight is coming in this evening. I believe that I'm going to be here by this time. And as I called him this morning, he said, I'm just around the corner. Where are we using? And before I knew what was happening, it was outside. Thank you so much, sir. I, I think we needed to do that. Um, and I'm looking at a situation whereby maybe the next event, we need to border them, Right? They can just dial in from wherever they are. Larry, next target. Lara, over to you. Thank you very much, Jesse. So, we're moving on to 
a question Q&A time, and I will be introducing and calling up to the podium our panelists. All right. So don't forget your questions. Don't say, Lara, I forgot. Or when we were about to, when you were starting, I didn't get that vibe immediately. I didn't feel like it. You know, so let's write. Oh, question. You people are very auto. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Thank you. All right, so I'll invite the first panelist in no particular order. And I'm talking about Albert Afolabi, who is a visionary, excellent self-motivated, and passive individual. Positive, permit, um, I beg your pardon, positive individual. Albert has immense passion for human capital building, business development with a profound effort at crafting and developing creative strategies for people and businesses in the last 15 years. He's very optimistic about the animal's possibilities of the human will, energy, and capacity. Albert is able to creatively route great mental, relational, and personal faculty, particularly in the areas of strategy and business development, business advisory, project management, ma management and or consulting. Albert is currently the CEO and co-founder TM30 Global Limited, a software development IT and telecoms consulting company. I can go on and on and on. Albert is happily married to Sarah Oluwakemi and they're blessed with children. Please put your hands together as I welcome Albert Afolabi. You're welcome, sir. Okay, move on to our second panelist. And person of Jumoke, Aleoke Malakai, forgive me if I'm murdering your name right now, but always known as Jam. I think I like that, Jam. Okay, Jam, as she's fondly called, is a seasoned HR practitioner with wealth of experience spanning over a decade of interfacing with CEOs, HR leaders, and hiring managers on all issues as it concerns the HR functions with talent management, career development, emotional intelligence, learning, and so on. She's very keen about talent, finding them on spec, using them effectively, and keeping them longer within our organization. Our people experience cuts across consulting, telecoms, oil and gas, media, and fintech. Jumoke is a graduate of English and Literary Studies from Babcock University. She's an Agile coach. She also has an MBA from the prestigious business school in the Netherlands. There's so much here, I'm telling you. Please appreciate with me. Jam. You're welcome, Jam. All right. So the third person, our third panelist for today, is Eliana. Eliana Philip Amolum is effective is an effective HR leader and agile people coach. Great. Who drives business results via the delivery of people strategy, discovering talents and harnessing their potentials to build an exceptional, successful team and brand for excellent growth for excellent growth in an organization. Her passion is helping, is engaging people, which she strongly believes will change the world of work to a better place that will create value for every customer and deliver strategic business objectives. She has pioneered HR departments in reputable organizations and also enterprise agile adoption. She has over 18 years work experience in HR, which includes our agile journey. She's married with children. Please welcome with me, Eliana. Please put your hands together. You're welcome. All right, our third panelist today is Emmanuel. Mwalo, please just forgive me if I am muttering your name right now. Okay. 
Emmanuel is, the, is a senior HR business partner and HRBP up coordinator at InterSwitch with over 14 years experience. His skills and competences cover project management, HR analytics, workforce planning, advisory, facility management, recruitment, talent, resourcing, and so on. Is a dynamic HR professional with 14 years experience that spans across so many different areas, including the fintech space. Please welcome with me, Imano. Please put your hands together. You're welcome. Okay. So I know I have a lot of questions here, um, but I want us to first share our experiences because there's somebody seated here and we're saying, Lara, anything digital, my hand no deal. Anything digital, what is digital? Even to press remote or anything, I don't know. So the first question I'm going to ask us to share our experiences as regards digital. When we say digital, thriving in the digital work, workplace, what does it mean to you? What are your experiences? And I'm going to start from you, Eliana. All right, so good morning or good afternoon, everyone. Um, yes, so my experience um, in the layman's language is um, transformation of, you know, of the way we work um, using systems, um, using systems to achieve um, results. Um, you know, like, okay, I just given a few examples, um, LinkedIn examples, like just like the HR system, you know, where we have everything on, you know, online in the cloud where we have all the information, all the data um, to be able to achieve results. Uh, we can get, you know, results from all the things we've imputed. Uh, for example, is salary review, for example. Um, we want to know how many people are eligible to have salary review and what have they done, what are their performances. Is a company ready for the salary review? So all that we have in, in the system. Using the data, we can now say, yes, okay, fine, we can go ahead and have a salary review, or we can go ahead and just, you know, increase salary review by 10%, 15% for five, you know, depends on the number of people. So in the layman's language, that's what, you know, um, digital transformation is in the HR context. Of course, there's the more. The more. Thank you. Uh, good morning. Thanks, everyone, for having me. Um, I, I'm a blend of still the old school and the new world by saying we're going digital, I did digital, but we still need to pick a lot of learning from when we are coming physically to the office, what were the things we're able to achieve, and how do you bring them into this new digital world. The new digital world now means that you might not see your colleagues for a long time, you might be working from your house. Uh, so you are all alone. So there's still a lot of um, deficiencies in this new world, in quote. Uh, I own a software development firm, and I've seen solutions faster. You see a software guy coding, and while he's doing this coding, he has this mental block. He gets a quick answer by just showing his screen to somebody sitting by his side that can just look at this code and like, you missed this out. But in the new digital world, you are just on your own. So uh, digital world for me is you being able to pick a blend of both worlds together. Um, one is a world that is highly collaborative. That is still the key word, collaboration, where you know that even though you are working on your own from your house, but you must still be able to keep everybody that you need to help you get results at the press of your button. Uh, there's a lot of online tools that helps you to be able to put... Uh, get people to work. Uh, before, before I can give you a document, I have to use my, maybe a flash drive to copy it for you now. I can put all these documents on Google Drive. Everybody can uh, work on it at the same time. Mm -hmm. So uh, the new world is more about collaboration, uh, more about you getting used to all these collaborative tools, especially, and being able to keep track of the results you need to generate. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you very much, Albert. Uh, okay, so thank you uh, for having me. I, I think the first thing that occurred to me with what you just said about tools uh, is the fact that I joined a fintech organization sometime last year 
and I had to use Notion. I mean, I was no Notion. Uh, and I started to look, uh, you know, I was saying to myself, how do I familiarize myself with this tool? Like, I can say I'm a digital native, but this was new to me. And right now, I've come to the point where I'm using Notion like a pro. Mm. And that happened in a year. Mm. So if you ask me, what does it take to thrive in the digital workplace? It is be dynamic. Mm. <laughs> Adapt. You need to stay relevant. It's a deliberate thing. You know, I always say to people that I can join that organization and say, which one is Notion? Please, please, WhatsApp is okay. Uh, let's just use Slack. You know, that's my comfort zone. But my ability to actually want to be stretched. I, I'm sure that as we ask questions, there are a few more things I'll share. And that's how I got into Agile. Uh, one of my coaching clients said she knew you, you know. And I came from HR, and now I coach people on Agile. Wow. And that's to say that I got into this organization again. And the first thing my CEO said to me was, we need to grow an agile organization. And then I'm like, hey, oh, girl, from HR, where did I land like this? <laughs> and then I went online. I'm like, what courses do I need to take so that I understand what my CEO is talking about? Because it's either that or I'll be relevant. <laughs> and then I've taken two courses, one in Scrum, Scrum Fundamentals, yes, and another one in Agile. Why? Because I don't, I don't, want, I don't want to be backward. You know, you can be in Lagos and still be living like you're in Osho State. I, I don't, no disrespect to people in Osho. But you know, you were saying something about people Iluoke. from Iluoke, you get. Yeah. You can be here and not be relevant. So the first thing for me is staying relevant and being okay with being stretched. Hmm. Thank you very much. Being okay be, with being stretched. Emmanuel. Okay. Um, thank you. And it's indeed an honor to be here. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll flip my own experience from her account, right? Um, the greatest pain for me on my job is that what we used to hear three, four, five years ago as the, there's a war for talent stares me in the face every day. I sleep, dream, think, eat, wake up thinking about talent, right? Um, so while um, he, he was having his talk and was showing the pictures and the transitions from generations, I just I know I looked around the room and I noticed something that it was only those who were in front who kind of <laughs> related <laughs> with those transitions, right? But it, it, it brought it very vividly this. I, I, I think I'm, I'm I'm a bit of the old school, right? But the point so for instance, my the picture of my WhatsApp status is the same picture I put there the very first day I set up my WhatsApp account. <laughs> I haven't changed it. Old school. Yes. But the funny thing is this, I know how to TikTok, I know how to, uh, I'm on WhatsApp, I'm on, I'm on Instagram, I'm on Twitter. Um, because I'm also, looking for, I'm also looking for talent every day, I'm on Slack. In fact, I'm on Slack groups for product managers, for engineers, for business people, because people like Larry will have, my head on a, will have my head on a platter if I don't deliver to him those talent he needs to deliver his objectives. Now, the point is, it, it's amazing to the point that even though I still feel I'm old school, I find myself doing live streams, I'm using Stormyard, I'm looking for applications to make my life easier. And key is, I found out that most of the digital natives and the younger generation relate with you even if they have a block for you, by the time they find out that, okay, you know the tools they use, they open up a whole lot to you. So that's, that's the angle I come from. Thank you very much, Imano. My next question will be directed at you because um, your talent manager, you have that, you said you breathe talent, you sleep, you wake up, that's your concern. I also have a lot of people who are saying, Lara, I've been applying since forever. I'm good. I have a WhatsApp group that, of people that I coach and you know, train from time to time, and this is a source of concern. Like this question is saying that this person resigned and um, has learned tech skills. Be okay, let me just read it out. In 2021, I decided to resign and learn a tech skill because I wanted to switch careers. It seems hard getting jobs that require the skills because you need a certain level of experience. How does one break through without having any job experience and just the skills. I think this is for pivoting, career pivoting. Okay. Yeah. Um, I knew, in fact, coming, driving here today, I knew this was going to be one of the major questions that would come up. Um, now, taking the gleaning from Lola's um, 
presentation, right? If you look at the skills that have been listed there, first and foremost is ensuring that you have those skills, but with a bit of a variation, and I'll, I'll break it down to you. Today, you, you move into the tech world. He, he has a software company. Everybody knows that if you're looking for devs today, front-end devs are all over the place. And that's because front-end is all flowers and butterflies and pretty things, you know, making the front-end look nice. Back-end is where the work is. Back-end is functionality. Back-end is actually what makes the system work. It's a little more difficult. So you have fewer people there. Another way, the, one of the first things I tell people who have told me that they've gotten the skills is if you want to break in, look for the areas that are in highest demand. Back-end developers, trust me, even if you have today six months of back-end development experience, a recruiter will talk to you. If you are DevOps engineer, even if you have two weeks of DevOps engineering experience, a recruiter will talk to you. So it's, it's not just about getting the skills. It's also about getting the skills that are highest in demand. And the truth is, one of the ways, is, one of the, one of the ways that are sure that you actually get in is the fact that you first of all have a recruiter talk to you, and then you can distinguish yourself amongst the pack. So I can assure you that once there's a tech recruitment fair going on, I can assure you that 60 to 75% of people who will flood in there would be front-end developers. I can assure you that. So the point is, at that point, if I work in, the first thing I'm going to do as a recruiter is I'll look for a way to sift amongst that 75% to find out the guy who is the best. Because just like he says, mm. the job right, is a solution to a problem from that desk. Mm. So I'm looking for the best that's going to solve that problem for me. You want that solution. I want that solution. And the point is, I'm looking for that guy who is going to give me or who's going to build me that next thing that's going to give, that, give me that next, billion, that, that next billion. So as a candidate, be that solution. Be the Acquire solution. that skill. Be the solution. Look for the skills that are highest in demand. Look for a way to make sure you, um, the projects you've built, you have a way to put them out there so that people can see them. Sometimes when I go in on Slack, what I'm basically doing is I'm just reading through the messages, the conversations, and I'm looking for that guy who is just making a comment that... That triggers me. And then I, I hit him up and I say, can we have a conversation? Hmm. That's just it. You need to look for that thing that just distinguishes you. Having the skills is not enough, but getting the skills in the areas that is highest in demand and making sure you do something that sets you apart from the general populace. Thank you very much. Eliana, you have something to say? Okay. So I, if I remember the question, the person said his, um, he or she has gone through some training and is requiring to you know, get a job on that. So. I mean, I know in Nigeria here, we like, we're very big on certifications and all that. I, I know Lala mentioned something. She said, you must have experience. Now, you don't need to have to go to a paid job. Because the truth is, whoever wants to hire you is looking for somebody, somebody who has experience. So you could, I mean, get some, like an internship, you know. I'm sure he's willing to hire somebody for free, you know, just to, you know, pay for transport or, fee, or you know, lunch, but somebody who will work. By working, you're getting experience. And you could say to yourself, okay, I'm going to work with him for like a year or six months just to get a hands-on experience. And then finally apply to, I mean, for that, to that, to that um, particular job. And I think that's what the person should do. Because I also did that in my agile journey where I had to work for someone, you know, with a low pay. It, it didn't matter to me. What I wanted was experience to understand what agile is all about and what coaching, you know, the agile way is all about. So I think we should try that. No, uh, like, like, like I really said, one question we've always asked in my own business, and it applies to everybody, is what are you bringing to the table? Even if you come to me that you want to learn and you want to intend, I want to see what you have done, which is the very good thing about tech. Tech is not magic. Mm -hmm. If you come to me that you're a front-end person, you're a back-end person, I want to see what you have done before. You don't need to work with anybody. If you tell me you're a UI UX designer, there are many... I, first thing you should do is... Go take any brand, take, any, take GT Bank, take their mobile app, create their sc screens. When you come to me and I interview that, you are, you, are, you are a front end person, I don't see what you have done. But when you come and you tell me you are still learning, I'm not, even in my office, I think we have this, um, we, have, we have a four month, if you come to us to intern, you have four months 
to become a full staff. Even four months, you cannot get to be on any major project. We let you go. Because you, are, you must bring something to the table. So if you are pivoting into tech, start, you've learned front end. Start doing some stuff so that when you go to the next interview, you should be, that is what you should even show them. You should be able to show that this is the project I've worked on. Now the question is, is it live or is it not live? That's what, let them be able to see. Uh, there, there was a friend and guy that came to our office with, uh, for an interview and he wasn't with his laptop. I was like, guy, you're not ready for the interview. Uh, do you want me to give you my laptop to be showing me your job? No. For that interview, you must come with your laptop, be the first to show that this is what I've done. Then when we look at what you have done, my question is, as an intern, are you going to drag the guys that already have working back or with little explanation, you can up your skill? So those are what we look for. Come to the table. Bring something to the table. Don't just say, I want to learn. It's a waste of our own time, too. Thank you. Thank you very much. Please appreciate our panelists. Okay, I have some questions here, and they are around building a, a digital workplace in an organization that is probably not receptive. I have a question on, okay, I'm just going to read it out. Somebody said, how can I build digital workplace in my organization? I think that is uh, John. And um, then another person says, personally, I feel working remotely won't fly 100% in Nigeria from experience. Okay. Okay, this is a business owner saying one of his staff sports is laptop <laughs> after taking the laptop home. <laughs> All right, um, there's a question around building um, digital workplace in your organization, making your organization a digital workplace for someone who is, yeah, I've gotten it. All right, so the second question says, how do we thrive digitally in a deep bureaucracy um, Civil service, a system that believes in paper. <laughs> That's a very practical question. And then we'll come back to that. Jam, there's a question specifically for you. I feel it's been treated somehow, but this person wants your take on it. It says, what stands out for you in a candidate? What is that one thing that will make you prefer a candidate to be hired? The role is customer service now. Oh, okay. Yeah. I hope it's not that uh, somebody I've interviewed before is uh, <laughs> <laughs> trying to get exposed. Expo. Um, okay, so first thing for me is enthusiasm. I need to see that, you know, you're not, you're not, uh, you're not cold. You know, I need to, I need to see, I need to see the vibe. I need to see that you really, not that you're desperate, so it's a thin line. You don't come across as desperate. If you don't give me this job, something will go wrong in my life. Not quite but some degree of enthusiasm, you know. And Lola spoke about purpose, you know. I need to see that you're not looking for a job just because you're looking for a job. The job is speaking to something bigger. You want to contribute to something bigger. All of that for me, they really count. And, and it speaks to, you know, my, my culture within my organization. I was going to say something about the first question about building uh, a digital organization and you've said that, you know, that environment is like civil service. That's a tall order. I was on radio on Tuesday on behalf of my uh, MBA school. And I was talking about building a people-first organization. And after I said a lot of English, I said, wait, HR, before you carry the burden of building a people-first organization, if the CEO does not think that he wants a people-first organization, effort in futility, in caps. You know, you know Lola said, when you write things in caps, you're shout I'm shouting. Effort in futility. So if leadership don't want a digital organization, wait, how do you want to do it? <laughs> how do you want, you are carrying a lot of weight. And you need to know to pick your battles. And the I'm issue, an advocate, sorry to interrupt you, Jam. Okay. The issue, because you know we're in Nigeria, and most employees, a good number of employees get to jobs because of survival. So... I get hired in a, on an organization, I'm performing, I'm learning and all that. The money is good, I need the money. Um, but when it comes to digital, frustration, 1,000%. So, so you have two you options. Do? Stay there, struggle with the reality that they cannot embrace digital, co be collecting your salary every month, living the baby girl life, or you look for another job. You cannot... You cannot 
I do not take You can't thrive. <laughs> I mean, you cannot, you cannot thrive. take it upon yourself as an individual to say, because I like everything that is going on here, we must be... You cannot fight that battle. If the owners of the business don't see the relevance... I said my CEO told me I want an agile organization. Mm. So I, I'm the one that... Can you say I'm the one yeah. sh shaping up, yeah. trying to go and look for certification? So if leadership, if the owners of the business, it's not a priority for them, make the most of your reality there. Thank you know you. you need the money. Thank but you very not, much. You know, you're not Thank a tree. You. We said that before. Yeah, if you're not a tree, move on. Yes, Imano, you have something to say. Okay. And, um, I was going to say that because we also want to... Because we also want to impute things into people who are listening to us. If, you're, if leadership doesn't buy in, your, 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 your problems are, are, are massive. They are massive. But the point is, so that we don't destroy hope for everybody, um, I would say to you, if you're in an organization and you want to be digital and the organization is not digital, first and foremost, I'll tell you, anchor God. Hold on to God very strongly. Then the next thing is this. I will tell you, don't give up hope. On your own, step out of your comfort zone and look for whatever tools it is that you can use to make your own job easier. Right? At every given, at, at every given instance that you have, try and showcase it. Hmm. At every given instance you have, try and showcase it. If, if you have a presentation to do, and it's maybe on WhatsApp, uh, sorry, it's on PowerPoint, right? And you have used a tool to get the data that you're using making that presentation. Look for a way to talk about that tool in that presentation. You never can tell where your, where your, where your, where your salvation will come from. Hmm. That's just so that we can keep hope alive. Thank, Thank you. you very much, Imano. Thank you. All right, so just an advice to that person. Um, I think you should think about the pandemic. A lot of organizations have changed because of the pandemic. Um, Lara mentioned something. She said she has been in the digital space uh, workplace Lola. for Lola, I beg your pardon. Lola, five years ago. So when the pandemic came, it was easy for them to just float. You don't have to wait for change to come before you change. Because guess what? When the change finally comes, you might not be able to survive it. So it's better for you to start the change before the change comes. Mm -hmm. An example is, you know, how I moved from, well, I'm still a HR professional, of course. Um, how I got into, I found Agile you know, um, because of a lot of issues I, I, you know, saw in my organization and I needed a, so a solution. Now, I finally found Agile, but now it was how to introduce Agile to the organization. How do I tell my directors that this is the way forward? So I decided to learn Agile myself. I decided to change my mindsets because for me, I know that if I change my mindset, I'll be able to influence others. So that goes for, I don't want to say too much, but that goes to that person. You also, by trying to learn how to digitalize yourself, for example, could also help somebody. And you can actually change your organization. It might be very slow, but you will do it. So try and just start that change yourself before, you know, whatever change comes. Mm, thank you very much. Um, I'd like us to go, to go to skills. Somebody mentioned that, oh, because Emmanuel, you said um, we should look at skills that are on high demand. So someone is asking, what are the skills that are on high demand? And secondly, the B part that I feel we should also add is because, I mean, I remember that, that question reminds me of someone who says, Lara, my husband is saying I should go after these skills, part BI, Python, or everything, but see, I registered for one course, I paid, it did not work. I didn't understand it, you know. So how do we know, how do we um, integrate technology into our quest to stretch ourselves, knowing what works for you? So the first part is that, um, what are the skills on high demand? And two, how do I know the one that works for me? Because the one that works for me may not work for you. True. Yeah. Very true. Okay. Now, because I'm in tech, right, um, these days there are buzzwords, tech bro, tech sis, and the reason why those words have become buzzwords is because the tech industry seems to be booming today. Um, once you're a software engineer, right, chances are that if you put your resume out there, chances are Six, six out of seven that you have a recruiter speak to you. Once you 
once you're into software development, right? Now, but the point is, we've gotten to that point where there's a scarcity of talent within the tech ecosystem, so everybody's looking for these resources. And once you brandish a resume that is, has software development on, on it, someone will look at it. But, we, but the, that, that thing has progressed a bit, where it is now, it's not just about being a software developer, but how good are you as a software developer? Because these are the guys who write all these things that are moving all these things without us touching them and stuff and stuff like that. So if you ask me, what are the skills that are in high demand? Software developers are in high demand today. And within software development itself, back-end back engineers are very, are, are being sought after a whole lot. Um, DevOps engineers are being sought after. Um, site reliability engineers, SRE engineers are being, being sought after. Um, scrum masters, scrum masters today. If you, just like she mentioned, this agile methodology, if you're an engineer, if you're a, a project manager or a quality assurance engineer and you have adopted the agile methodology, you are good at the agile methodology, you have the certification, chances are that six out of seven recruiters will call you today. Even if they are not in Nigeria, you will get calls from abroad today. So if you are looking for what to go into, software engineering is something you can try. Um, product management is something you can try. Um, DevOps engineering is something you can try. Um, program managers, quality assurance engineers, especially having the agile certification Backing, backing it up. Now, in the midst of all of these things, not all of us are going to be tech bros and tech sisters. Uh, I can hear yes, sir, from the I crowd. I was about to ask that, too. <laughs> not all of us are going to be tech bros and tech sisters. Um, if I give you a bit brief of my own history, you will even wonder how I'm even where I am today. Right? But whenever I look at myself, I say, look, if I could do it, then there's nobody in this Nigeria that can do it, though. Yes, and I, and I say that very proudly. Now, because not all of us are going to get into tech, right? The point is, if you are someone who is very inquisitive and who, um, who eats up a lot of information out there, seek information, eat information, be on the constant search, hmm. all you need to do is find out what is in high demand. For instance, if you look at Nigeria as a country today, honestly, about two or three months ago, I was thinking about taking some time off to go and learn construction. And I'll tell you why. Every day I drive from my house, I live on the Lekki axis, and I drive from inwards of Lekki towards VI, and all I see are houses popping up. And I said to myself, do you know that anybody who has a an organization where you are teaching people how to either plaster, plumb, become plumbers, become carpenters. Do you know if you have an organization that has just about 50 of those people who offer those services, you're on your way to becoming, to, raise, to be raising a tech company. And all I, all I need to do is if I do that, I put it on technology, people can order. Before you know it, I'll, You're be, in business. I'll be struggling Thank with him you, as a CEO, COO, co-founder. <laughs> And I'm be raising funds. Thank so the you, point Manu. is, is to look for, is to look for what is in demand and just position yourself. It's all about position, you know. That's what it is. Thank you very much. Thank you, Manuel. Jam, you have something to say before no, we I move add on? Something to that. Yeah. Um, one of the skills uh, Lola spoke about was emotional intelligence, and I actually coach and train on EQ. And I'll just talk about four cardinal points of emotional intelligence that can help people who want to transition to tech. First is self-awareness. Lola talked about it. Now, don't go and struggle. Me, I, I cannot, I don't plan to ever code. Mm, let's know what we are doing. So, with self-awareness is go and acquire a skill that comes readily to you. That's why I ran to Agile, because I'm like, I already coach. I'm a career development coach. So, it was easy to come from the, I, even, I, I saw all the possible skills, and I saw Scrum Master, Product Owner, I'm like, I'd rather coach, because this already comes readily to me. So beyond software development, digital marketing, uh, virtual assisting, they're different things. You know, so do a search. And, and I think we're, at times we're lazy. 
Mm. Mm. We don't want to just just speak your phone. And I always tell people, if you can be on WhatsApp, you can be on Facebook, if you, if you can be on IG, if you can be on TikTok, I can't excuse you. You can be on, on LinkedIn. Yes. You can go on Google and search. So there are many skills beyond software development that is relevant. Product owners, product, product management, different, even HR. Because you're saying all these things now. You're saying all these things, Emmanuel, you didn't mention HR. <laughs> because who will make sure that you get everything is together? So self-awareness first. Make sure that you're taking, taking up a skill. Especially a child tech, you get. We are very important. <laughs> so yes, self-awareness. So look for a skill that comes readily to you. That ties to your strength. You know, so that you don't struggle. So that you are thriving regardless. Second is self-management. And while I was saying it, you don't want your line manager micromanaging you. If somebody has to be buzzing you to say, have you sent that report? Have you sent that report? There's a problem. So if you are going to thrive, you know, you've acquired that skill, be able to self-manage. And when you say self-management, that's you being the CEO of your life. Knowing what to do with your time per time. Third is social awareness. And that is understand what is going on around you. He has talked about what skills are trending. What are you, are you, you know, I was saying to someone in the, in the heat of COVID that if you say to somebody that, ah, this COVID, oh, I'm saying 2020, you tell somebody, hey, this coronavirus, and the person's like, eh, what's coronavirus? You should run. <laughs> you get, because that means the person is clueless about, so social awareness is understand what is happening around you. Do not be oblivious. The last one is relationship management. I have changed roles because I've opened my mouth and spoken to people in my network. Hmm. Mm. In my 13-year career, I only applied for one role. In the last, and I've worked in five, six organizations. Yeah, a lot, I know. But yeah, <laughs> I applied for just one. All the other ones. Somebody said, somebody said, or somebody reached out to me on LinkedIn. Relationship management. So you can learn the skill if you are not positioning to be able to land that dream job. Effort and futility again. So those four things, remember, self-awareness, self-management, social awareness, and relationship management. Mm -hmm. I hope that helps. Thank you very much, Jam. Yeah. Thanks so much. Yeah. Your, your so response was, um, yeah. will impact people who are probably not in tech. Everyone, really. Yeah. So le okay. le let me say my own personal story. Of, uh, I run a software development company for the past eight years, and I don't code. I'm not a developer. <laughs> wow. So uh, this is how I got into tech. Uh, I started with HR consulting. And I'd always wondered something that had to do with people management, stuff like that. And one day while I was sitting in my office, then I was working with a company called, uh, I was working at, uh, with a consulting company. And somebody just called me that uh, they're looking for a project manager for an agric-related business. I studied agric engineering in Ife. Um, the person just wanted somebody that could solve the problem. So one of the greatest skills that you must have is problem solving. Number two that you must have is the ability to sell anything. <laughs> so, um, one of the, that's the key ability. See, you could call me to come interview with you. First, I want to know what you are looking for. Do you have the ab ability to sell yourself? So, this guy just called me from uh, UK one day that this guy is looking for this kind of job. Are you interested? Go meet with this person. And in like 30 minutes of speaking with this guy, it was like, uh, you are not a project manager, but you seem to know how to solve the problem. We'll give you the job. And I got the job. And how I fi finally transitioned into tech. So I met a friend in the office there. I was working for a company called MTech. He's a software developer. That's a very good story. He started as a cleaner. From being cleaning in the office, he saw the way everybody's pressing computers and he's interested. So when he's not cleaning, he's sitting in the tech office, seeing what they are doing, asking questions. And... He put together about three months alive to buy himself a laptop. He's one of the best software developers we have in Nigeria as we speak. He's, 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 he's actually my business partner today. So the guy found out something that even the so-called software developers in that business did not see. Then it was the value-added service industry. Uh, MTech then had about seven different platforms. One for, yeah, chicken will be here. One for content management. Uh, uh, campaign. We have about seven different platforms. And this guy, learning tech, asked one simple question. Why do you guys need seven different platforms? Why can't all those platforms be just one? And he started that quest of developing that one. So there was a day he came to meet me and he explained that problem to me. And I was like, you know what? 
I'll do a product document for him. So me, I just felt it was part of the job. So I did a product document that allowed him to put all of those seven platforms into one. Okay. And he came, he developed that platform. How we got to be partners, he started selling. But he's selling to these clients. And these clients will say, I like your platform. But I don't like this part that you have made to be blue. Change it to be green. The guy said, no, I can't change it. Go away. So he was losing sales. So he came back to me. I was like, okay, you know what? For every sale I do for you, I'll take 25%. And he agreed. Hmm. So I first took all of his clients that had <laughs> gone away. And I found out the question, why they are not buying from me, were just simple, easy. So I was like, see, guy, this guy just wanted to be blue. He's not changing your code. It's just a picture. Hmm. And we started selling. And when I got the opportunity to start the business, it was the first person I was going to go talk to. And we've been working together for the past seven years. Wow, that's so, great. Be able to sell yourself. More importantly, be able to think analytically and solve problems. You can then, if you come into tech and you can't solve problems, problems, tech, developing, software coding is problem solving. If you can't solve a problem, you can't think analytically, you can't do software. You can't mm -hmm. even come into tech. So, problem create, solving skills, yeah, tops. Create yourself, put yourself in a way where you can think about the problem and you can find how to solve it. Think about every single problem that is available in this world and try to take a bit of it. Try to look for what other solutions can be there. Then you are on your way to be a good person. Thank you very much. Please appreciate the panelists for me. All right. We have a question here on career pivoting. I know that we mentioned something the other We addressed a part of it. But I, from my experience, I see that pivoting careers can, is actually a real job. It's like looking for jobs. You know, so what are the practical examples or practical things that you would like to share? And I'm starting, this is to Liana and Jam on career pivoting. Oh, but I have a question. I have some questions on business. We have just about five, ten more minutes, so we really need to make it short. Okay, I mentioned something. I used myself, you know, my own life experience on how um, I, you know, moved into Agile. Um, the truth is, there's always a need, okay? So don't just change jobs because you want to change jobs. Not everybody's as sharp or as intelligent as, I mean, permit me to say that. Um, we learn differently. Some of us are slow, some of us are fast. You know, some of us can move from, I mean, can code, you know, like Jumoke rightfully said, she can code and that's the truth. Just find out what is this pressing need? What's this talent that I have inside, this passion that can create value, not just for myself, but for the society. Let's not forget that creation of value is what will make you thrive in the digital workspace. Mm. And then, of course, continuous improvement. If you can't do that, unfortunately, you will just go obsolete. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I'll just add to that, that if you want to you know, move into another career path, I think the first thing to identify are your transferable skills. I said something earlier that coming from HR and I had to start to work in the tech environment and I wanted to get a digital uh, skill, what I, looked, what, I, what I did was to look inward to what came readily to me. And so I went after the agile coaching course because already I was a career development coach. So look for transferable skills. I have coaching clients that have moved from customer service to HR. And the first thing I told them to do was identify what skills do you currently use in customer service that were relevant in HR? If you do that, and then you do all the other things we've said, you'll be you know, on the journey to career pivoting. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Jam. So um, the question I have for Albert is, firstly, we are in, um, in, our, in Nigeria. We have um, employees who are also running businesses by the side um, and having multiple streams of income. So um, this person is saying that how can he raise funds no, 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 no funds now. Business skills. I think this question is about business skills to be profitable. Yeah, it's talking about where can I learn the skill, business skills at an affordable amount. Okay, let's focus on business skills. What, what are the skills that you think um, an employee who is also trying to do a side, what are the things that he or she must prioritize. I want to be great at my job, but also have a business to run. And I need, to, I need skills for it to be successful. 
I want to have multiple streams of income and also at least have my job. How do I integrate both and still perform? Okay, so uh, um, the, the best advice here is uh, learn to be able to get on business that don't need your physical presence or be able to digitize your business in a way. Uh, I sell cars. Selling, me selling cars, doesn't, I don't have to be there physically. All I have to be able to do is somebody calls me, he needs a car. I'm able to quickly do search on Google or Gigi to see who has the kind of car. I speak with the person. I have foot soldiers that I could say, go check this car. This car is available. Then you could be the middleman. More as, so look for business that sometimes don't need your physical presence, especially when you are committed to a nine to five. Because where you are committed, you also need to give your hundred percent commitment. But you must look for stuff that you can do that don't need your physical presence. And thank for uh, communications, thank for technology. You are able to do that. Um, in terms of business skill, what you also need to look for is what are the other skills that you have that could be monetized. So somebody needs to write a project. Somebody needs to do a sales pitch. I've made more money writing business plans for people. And I spend more of my time late at night. Sometimes I work till about 2 a.m. because I have a side project. So look for skills, look for stuff that you can do easily, that other people need, that you can spend your lunch hour or your after working hours. I have some, I have some tech developers in my office that stay in the office till about 9, 10. And one of these days I was in the office and I saw the guy working on the project. For me, if you work with me, I don't mind you getting any side job. Development is your skill. That's how you develop. But also ensure that when you have a commitment to work for this person, give them that utmost commitment. And it's one of the major issues we're having today. Hmm. Uh, software developers say they want to work remotely. What they are telling you is that I want to get two, three employment. <laughs> and if you are not careful, your own job starts getting. So what I advise people is don't take a job if you won't give your 100% commitment. Don't take it. So Thank you. whatever you can commit to, make sure that you can give a 100% commitment to it. Thank you very much, Albert. My last question will be on time management. Because whether you are an employee only or you're an employee with a side um, also, you still need time management. Jam, in your opinion, you and um, Eliana, how do we manage our time? Because, I mean, I'm thinking about that front-end developer who really wants more money, wants to add value in more than one organization, and still needs to deliver. I mean, is it time for us to be on Instagram forever and enjoy our life, lives? Or how do we manage time? So, you know, uh, Lola, I, I, I like that I can refer to many of the things that we said earlier. Uh, Lola talked about work-life integration, you know. So, it's really a deliberate attempt to sort of you know, look at all the areas of your life you feature in and make sure that none is suffering. Uh, time management really is, is, is up to each person. Lola talked about how she can send you an email 3 a.m. Yes, because she would rather be up. No, no, and, and that's the reality. So you need to know how best you work. And to Albert's point, if you're going to be having, if you have a nine to five and you want to do your side hustle, you cannot afford to cheat your employer. You know, and you can be master of many things, and then you're not, or, or jack of everything, and you're not good at anything. So it's it's a, it's an internal battle, you know. And I believe in you being able to know what energy you have. Now the truth is, not everyone can do a nine-to-five and have a side hustle. I have Absolutely. one of my senior friends in the HR space that has a full-time job and has a booming. Business. Um, HR consulting firm. Wow. Those are people that me I look up to because some of us we are two portfolio consultants. You get, in addition to what I do in my nine to five. So it is that. Do you have the bandwidth to actually do these two things? It can look very beautiful, but can you handle it? Some of us are that we will do just a nine to five and we're good. Some are able to double. You know where those two hearts. Some will do just the entrepreneurial bit and all. So it's up to you to say, okay, what works for me. And then whatever it is you realize you are able to accommodate, then you plan. Like you said, maybe late hours to commit to your side hustle or the weekends. I coach uh, at the close of business. I coach at the weekends. So my weekends are not really mine. That's, that's what I do on the side. Mm, so is that Jam. I'm able to balance, balance it. it. So that, thank that's you so much, Eliana. All right, so in addition to what um, Jimoka just said, the truth about it is this. I mean, the practical um, situation here. I mentioned the first time when she asked about what, what does digital, um, digital mean to you, and I said the use of systems. Now, 
if you want to do, you know, one million and one things, in Agile, there are systems that you can use, there are tools you can use to help manage your time. Um, there's something called a Kanban board, where you put things, you know, things you really want to do, and then, of course, you keep moving them until, until it's done. Now, you have to, you know, they say practice makes perfect. You want to do side hustle, you want to do this, and you want to ensure that you add value in each of them. You must create, you must have like a, I think Lola mentioned uh, a board, you know, but in Agile, you have, you have tools for that. You have Trello, you have different things. Search for those things, you know, learn how to search, how to, you know, look for things that will help you thrive in whatever you do. Because guess what? If you want to do, multitasking is, is not in existence. People say I multitask, it doesn't work. Something has to give. But if you want to do, I mean, like consultants, they have different clients. How do they do it? They still give, you know, value to each client. But in Agile, you must have something that will help you monitor your time. You have a Kanban board to do, done, you know, um, doing and then done. So as you do it, you move. You can see it. You put a timer for yourself. And that's why it's digital. You have your phones. You know, you can put an alert to say, you know, ah, this is the time for me to do this and this is it. Mm. So, I mean, it's easy. Thank you very much, Eliana. I think Albert has something. Sorry, so, um, all of us carry mobile phones and we don't use them. So in my office, one of the major things you have to do is you have a calendar on your mobile phone. Every day, um, you must tell me what your plan of eight to five is. So I get into the office, the first thing I do is I take my notepad, I list out all the deliverables for the day, I plan time to them. Then I put it, I paste it, so when any of my staff needs to come have a meeting with me, all they just need to do is don't disturb me. Go to that uh, paper you see, look for the free time, put your name and the time that is okay with you. And it's the same thing I ask them to do. You have a calendar. I should not call you that, ah, are you free for this meeting? Just go to your calendar and start putting on your calendar every single day, 8 to 9, 9 to 10, 10 to 11, fix an activity that you are doing. Yeah, it's your same work activity. If you are working on the project for two hours, put it there. So let's use even the simple tools that you have with you to manage your time. Every single day, be able to plan extremely every single activity. You are resuming your work at 8, you are closing by 5. Can you account for every single hour in that day? That's the mm. best way to manage your time. It is in the doing, not in the talking. So take a paper if you don't want to use oh. this stuff. Take a paper, write it down, and be very practical about it. Thank you very much. I'm just going to be taking last words from um, all of you here concerning. I have a question here, and I want your last word to also reach out to somebody who thinks that digital work is taking... Um, away some things. Um, I'm trying to read, to, like, I think this person, okay, says, don't you think digital is taking away discipline and human behavior from the workplace? <laughs> so what is digital work taking away? And um, what if tech fails for a year? What's the backup plan? Or what's the backup? So, <laughs> so your last words. <laughs> you might not want to... <laughs> Your last words in 20 seconds, please. Okay. Um, <laughs> it is. I, and trust me, you're not the only one who is worried about it. Uh, yes, tech is taking a bit of the human angle to a few things. But the truth is, let's be, very, let's be very blunt with ourselves. It is the new reality. He said to us um, that um, technology is ruling the world. I, don't, I, I would rather want to change it, that the new world is now technology. So we can't live without technology anymore. I sit down today and I wonder how I managed to write my undergraduate project without internet. I, I think about it today and I say, man, we were superhumans back then. <laughs> I, I personally think that you know the Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Wi-Fi should be at the bottom. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. So technology is the new world, right? Uh, so whether we like it or not, my advice to you is basically this. Learn to live with it. We're learning to live with COVID now. COVID is part of us. Mm -hmm. Technology is part of us. Thank you. Right? Thank you, Oba. Thank you. Uh, let me just add to that, um, to say that, like you said, it's not going out of fashion. We are the ones who need to adjust. But I think in addition to that is you as an individual, you owe it to yourself to stay relevant. So don't 
don't be conceiving in your mind that one day we wake up and then technology will be out of the window. Not quite. It is what I think you need to do to make sure that you stay relevant in these changing times. Um, let me hand over to Alex. Thank you very much, John. Please put your hands together. Thank you. So, uh, it, 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 you must understand this. Technology is not the solution. Technology is an enabler. You can't, no matter how good the technology is, is enabling all the different ideas, solutions you have in your head. So, don't hate technology. See it as something that is enabling that good ideas you have to come to terms, and then you can embrace it all latter. Thank you very much. Thank you. So for me, um, I believe that everybody needs to have an agile mindset. I'm not being biased here because I'm an agile coach. But the truth is, if you have an agile mindset, no matter what the situation is, you'll be able to change, adapt and change. Now, I'm sure, I don't know if some of us have heard about VUCA, volatility, uncertainty, complexity and ambiguity. ambiguity. The truth about it is only an agile mindset can help. That's the truth. So I think every one of us must develop an agile mindset. And when you leave here, at least try and you know, learn more. Go and check a study about Agile. Agile is not for the techie world. So if anybody says, it, mm -mm, it's for everybody, even for your homes. So try and learn about Agile. Read about the Agile mindset, the principles and the values, and try to imbibe you know, by it. And you see, you get a change for, for yourself. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, please appreciate with me our panelists, Eliana, Halbert, Jam, and Imano. Thank you very much for your time today. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. My chair is surrounded by questions. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Why is everybody quiet? How many of us have taken selfie in this room? Have you taken selfie in the room? If you have not taken selfie, me, I'm taking my own. No. Ah, uh, bring out your phone and take selfie. Ah, uh, I went on Twitter. I've not seen any tweet from this room. Nobody is doing DCDP digital, Desta career. I'm not seeing any tag on Twitter. Nothing on Instagram. Nothing on TikTok. No, now. Oh yeah, I'm giving you two minutes. Let's start tweeting at Desta NG. Oh yeah, the next two minutes. Oh yeah, you're allowed to snap picture now. Ah. Uh -uh. Oh yeah, I'm going to Twitter. I've not seen anything. Oh yeah, I'm going to Twitter. I checked the hashtag. I didn't see any of our names. I didn't see. I'm supposed. We're supposed to be trending. Is it because we didn't pay you two two k? I didn't say anything. Hope I hope you didn't hear me saying anything. Okay, um, we are almost um, getting to uh, to rounding up, and I'm sure everybody is wondering what's the next thing, right? Everybody is wondering: Is there something else happening? Yes, yeah, something else is happening. I'll share a quick story with you, then I will introduce you into what the next um, conversation is about. Now, it's always interesting for us to come at an event like this. Uh, we have conversations and we'll go and nothing happens. But we want to take it a step further. We want to create what we call career community. We want to have conversations outside of this place. We want to get into smaller groups. We want to create mentorships. Right? Um, let me give you another dimension of tech uh, that most people are not looking at, content creation. How many of you are on TikTok? Uh? Oh, you're on TikTok, okay. You know, hello, how is the family? Good afternoon, sir. I didn't do it very well, Abby. Investor. Investors have been investor vibes. You know, I just have 1K. I think I'll just go to get fish, Abby, and I'll, I'll invest with 100 Naira. Now, what we don't know is that those guys are cashing on our views and our likes. I have a YouTube channel that has been monetized. A few days ago, I got paid in dollars. 
That's not, no, no, relax now. October 2021, I opened a YouTube, uh, my YouTube channel started thriving during the pandemic. I've crossed 6,500 subscribers, 225 views. I have not released a video on that channel consistently in the last three months. And yesterday, YouTube had to tell me that I have 29% increase in the numbers of people finding my videos in the last couple of days. And I'm wondering, what's happening? Now, for every time they view, please, when you go to my channel, Shegwan Keode, I'm sure I will get like 10 subscribers, just 10, from this group. When you go and you play a video, I have a thriving channel on HR content. And I use that... I pivoted into online courses. I have five courses on Udemy, as we speak. As a matter of fact, one of my videos on Udemy get featured on Udemy business, which means aside the normal individuals, human resources for beginners, aside the normal individuals that come, businesses now sign up on Udemy, they get to watch my video as part of the business package. Before, I used to get $50, $100 every month. Now, that has been doubled. Around, you know, I have different paydays. There is 20 something, that regular one, you all knows. Before the regular, I've had two paydays in dollars. One from Udemy. I've already crossed $1,000 on Udemy. And I started in October. But you know what happened? Self promotion. I started small on YouTube. People started consuming my content for free. And I said, ha -ha, for free, nothing, no money. I now package some of my YouTube videos into a course. I gave it out for free. People signed up. And I said, correct, 500 people doing this course. I now put a token on it. People are now paying $7, $3. Who then takes their own? And the thing is accumulating constantly every single month. I will convert it to Naira. You don't like the value. How much is a dollar now to Naira? Six what? Six ten. Let me even say nothing. Let's do six, six, six. Let's even do 600. 200 dollars times 600. How much? That's someone's salary. And I'm not physically on Udemy. That is someone's salary. Now, what am I saying in essence? I have a course. I teach people on how to monetize their skills. Some of, someone here is, I will keep quiet. You know, when coach is a coach, when someone is a coach, that person now goes to somebody to coach. You know what interesting it is. Now, when we create such a community, and we now, I now tend to teach you how to earn in dollars in respect of your profession. We don't need to come here, right? We'll go online, right? Please help me display that link. Let people start. I'm just giving them a taste of what they will learn when, they, when we get into that inner community. So if I now do a session of how to earn, as a matter of fact, I have a course on how to earn in dollars. If you are serious. I, I mean serious. I don't even have time again now. So it's a function of, no, no, no. It's, I'm not pride, you know. I'm not pride, you know. How many of us have filled it? So, um, we have about 137 in physically in the room and about 213 at a point on the YouTube channel. So, it's, it's a massive. We've already exceeded our... We had close to 915 people that registered. So, you are one of the few that came. Please, make sure you drop your name. Fill that link now. I'm just giving you a taste of the uh, a little taste. So take for example, we don't have time. You know, interestingly, let me farm some of our speakers more. Eh? Should I or should I not? Aruna, get close so, so that I chase me out of this place. You know, I have the tendency to I should come out. <laughs> so how many of us have feel that? How many of us? Are we doing that? No, please, it's important. We, we owe it to ourselves that we would do more in communities than any other place. We would do much in smaller units. Take, for example, we all put 
a certain community in one group and I decide to have a session with them. That's when the hand holding comes on. So it's not enough uh, to come here to say all these things. The power is in the action. That's tweetable, right? Who is tweeting it? Tag me at Chegon Akiode. Who is tweeting? Nobody. Power is in the action. Have you done that? Please do. I don't know. I can, I can step. Yeah, I'm stepping. And you can come. <laughs> Please, let's try to feel it. Um, it's very critical. Then swap to the next one also. Uh, once they are done with this, please, there's a feedback form will be flashing on the screen. Tell us what you feel about this event. Uh, did it meet your expectation? Did we speak too much English? And the rest. Thank you. Round of applause for the dollar man. You know, we, we, have, we have big men around us. Huh? I mean, uh, so he's, uh, and he's just been modest. He's been modest on the things he, he's doing and, and, and actually is affecting lives and transforming lives while, while at it, which is actually the important thing for us. is the purpose, really. Whatever you do, whether it's in tech or, or whichever um, sector you find yourself is, what is the purpose? Are you affecting lives? Are you changing? Are you... Are you doing the things that, uh, like you said, is it, I think it was you that, you know, what the passion that you really have. So um, my job is to close the program. So in five minutes, we'll be out of here. And uh, my job is to thank a lot of people, and I will do that. Uh, but before I get there, you know, when we're thinking of this, um, w this, this program and uh, what topic will resonate more. And, you know, we, we workshop a little bit, and then we, we came back and said, you know, let's look at how can people thrive in a digital workplace. And we're trying to think, okay, is everywhere really digital now? Is there, because, you know, once you think digital, everybody thinks of computer and, and, uh, and all the things that Emmanuel was saying. Emmanuel, thank you very much, because if we have only people like you, I'll be a farmer. I cannot do all the work that you have said, all those DevOps, Dev something, exactly. Not many of us li are like that. But then, how many of you have booked, a, uh, let's say, a bus? A bus going to, I don't know, the east or going to Benin recently? You actually can do it sitting down. I mean, before you have to go to Ojota and you have to go and book for the next day. And then God help you, you know, you get to Ojota and then five people are not dragging your leg and feet just to get you into their bus. So now you do it in the comfort of your home. Some time ago, I traveled and I booked a hotel. I didn't meet one staff in that hotel. I booked it online. I got a code. I got to the entrance. I put in the code. I got my card key. I got to my room. You choose the time when you want them to change your sheets and all of that. You don't meet anybody. So then I'm wondering, so these guys, those, they are, remember for the, for the, car, uh, for the bus, there used to be people that were ticketing, right? What has happened to them? In the hotel, they are receptionists. They are the concierge people. What has happened to them? That, guys, is really what we are talking about. Suddenly, those places are now digital places. How will those people thrive? Will they go back to their village and say, I cannot do anything again. Life has changed. Oh, my God. My family people have finally caught up with me. Or will they reinvent themselves? So when I was listening to, uh, you know, our, our keynote speakers, uh, fantastic, the both of you, thank you so much, Lola, and thank you so much, Timmy. You know, you guys, uh, Timmy, you, you, you took us through the evolution from, you know, when we started technology to where we are now. And uh, Lola shared with us, you know, the things that you need to start doing. 
And then we had the great panelists. And, uh, you know, we still have tons of questions. And the problem with panels is you never have enough time to answer all the questions. So apologies if your question was not answered. It's not intentional. We can't just keep everybody here for a long time. And that's why the community group Shegun was talking about is really important. There we will dive into all the questions. And we can attend to it, you know, in a more structured manner. So please endeavor to join those uh, uh, community groups. The interesting thing, guys, is all the things I was hearing, and I was taking so much notes, is it was not all techy. I was hearing self-awareness. I was hearing transformation. I was hearing you have to be agile. I'm, I'm going to be, you know, you've preached agile into my head now that, you know, I'm going to start looking for everything agile. You know, Lola, you talked about complex problem-solving skills. And Albert, you mentioned the same thing as well. These are not tech skills. So I think we need to, we need to reconfigure our head, you know. Sometimes when you hear digital, you hear technology, and you're all thinking computer. But how do you thrive in those places? It's not all because you have to go and learn Java, learn Oracle, learn. No, not at all. It is the self-awareness. It is the relationship management that you talked about. Those are the very key places we need to invest in. So I really hope that you guys have you know, picked one or two things from today. Um, again, we will we will have some other uh, programs that will come up shortly. Uh, please do follow us on, on data platforms. More importantly, really connect with us in the community uh, groups. So to start my long list of thank yous, uh, first, I am, and I'm sure you guys are most grateful to God for this opportunity. So a round of applause for the God Almighty. Thank you. And then, of course, our fantastic uh, speakers, Lola, thank you. Timmy, thank you so much. You are very grateful. To the panelists, Albert, Jam, Emmanuel, and Elena, thank you so much. We are really grateful. And then there are people that have made this really possible. We have uh, the pastor in charge for this ministry, because this is actually a ministry. Uh, pastor Solomon is not here. Um, applause for him, please. And then we have what we call the board of Daystar Career Development Program. These are actually the, the, call it the visionaries of this program, and they've been supporting us from day one. So thank you. I think we have Comfort, we have Patrick, and we have Benga. And then we have, of course, the team, the guys running around and trying to make sure everything is set, um, which is, you know, the management team of, of DCDP, as we call it. And of course, the, all the team members, uh, everybody, are they are volunteers, but fantastic people. I can't mention all of you. But you know, for all the guys in white, blue, red, uh, which other color? Yeah. Black. A round of applause for all of us, please. And of course, to the media people, thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, really. So, yes. Ah, fantastic. I had 1 p.m. in mind, and it's just 1 p.m. that we are closing. So really, guys, um, you know, we hope to see you again. Uh, like I said, please follow us. We will share our next uh, program with you. And until then, stay agile. Right? What else should we do? No, it's not only agile now. So stay agile. Be. Ah, let me see. Let me check my notes. Sorry? Ah, yes, exactly. I wrote self aware like five times. Self be self aware. Uh, continue to collaborate. Be dynamic and stay relevant. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you so much. Ah.
Ah, okay, the rest of you can go. We need to take pictures with the speakers. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. Have a great weekend. Yeah. I might not have a dollar, but I'm still cool. Yeah. Minor range in Romans, yo, I'm still okay. cool. Yeah. If all I pop is calling, then I'm still cool. Hello, hello, hello. Just cool. yeah. Yeah. small, important announcement. Small, important announcement. There is a firm, Alan and Grant, at the towards the yeah, towards the entrance, they are recruiting. They are recruiting. So if you, if you are interested in a job, they are recruiting both graduate levels and experience levels. So please uh, find them towards the, the exit. Thank you very much. 